we can't talk. All right. All right. Thank you. really called me to talk about it. Are you trying to convince me to buy one? Why isn't this? I don't know if this is the stream. Because the guest isn't showing up. Hold this right here. Do you have to reinvite them? That's the wrong one. Is it still going? I don't know. I'm still holding it in the same place? Yes. Uriel? Yeah. Come talk to the people, because we having some technical difficulties. Talk to them about what? We're on live right now. Oh, we are? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh. <laughs> do not do that. Do not do that. Do not do that. Do, not do, that. Do, not do, that. Um, do I have to be in the camera, or can I just talk to them? You really kind of feel like I have to be Yeah, you have to be in the camera. Right. You're not even in the camera because your face is covered and your face. Oh, I mean, you're back. It's okay. If they're like, anyways, um, admire my beauty. That's what beauty? You have a mask on. My hair. That's my beauty. It looks like you came back from the future. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, tell her to stop. I'm getting a beauty. <laughs> it looks like you came back from the future. Oh, the doctor. Oh, my. I'm going to get a Beetlejuice. Uh, Look at Michelle being a biter because she, uh, all, she already know I said Beetlejuice. Oh, you did? Yeah. Look, now there's six people watching. Why am I so famous? Wow. I'm honestly just like a guy. Greetings, everyone. I'm behind the camera right now. This is production. I'm also behind the camera right now. No, where, where are you going? going? <laughs> Get back in front of the camera. Look, so how would you come over here? But you from the mascot. I already had my time. So I'm a mascot now. This is your Yeah, you didn't He is here. Oh yeah, to, mom has to the main camera, right? He is here right now, um, holding my spot until I enter. But today we are making y'all gonna be with me for a while. Fucking like crazy. Y'all gonna be with me for a minute. Because a chair. a chair, what you need a chair? Three hours, people, save my life. We don't know, it might not be three hours. It could be- It's gonna be longer. Yeah. No, and we're going from scratch. We're going from complete scratch because it's going to taste the best and it allows time to put the most love into it. Yeah. I'm just saying, I did think it was kind of weird that like, you was like, oh yeah, my mac and cheese pasta, mac and cheese, and then boom, oh, I'm gonna do that. Lasagna, guys. I'm gonna do that. In fact, you gonna pass me the KitchenAid, the, the um, the um, the pasta maker for the. Wait, you're about to do all these? All no, these no, 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 oh. no, no, no. Wait, I'm not doing it now. What are you looking for? Oh. Wait. So why do you need the kitchen? The kitchen aid. I want to show. I want to oh. show. Oh, you want to be bougie. I get it. Wow. That's what you call it? Okay. So, I got a new toy. What? Oh, 
This live stream, stream is not sponsored by Kitchen Aid. <laughs> but every video can't be like this, mother. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I mean, I get excited about my kitchen stuff. Y'all know that this makes elbows and ziti and all kinds of stuff. So I will be making one day soon some macaroni and cheese, but scratch pasta. Here you go, my friend. Thank you. Okay. This is, um, <laughs> when you crew with your, kid, your children. It, yeah. Right. Right. Uriel, are yeah. you on the phone? Uriel's not even visible. I'm not. Yes, I am. What do you want? <laughs> You Why are you like accusing people of lying so I, I, don't, I, I don't accuse. Cause I, mommy, because the dirt. screen is split in half, so it cuts off some of the video oh, showing you. Like okay, yeah. so the first thing we are going to do, where is that? So mommy, brown? um, pass this milk. You're not visible. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. Once you because we have the overhead, right? Yeah, because it's split in half for the food. And you can see me when I do that. Yeah. I asked my my offspring, my lovely offspring, to set up stuff. Um, Arish is manning the comments. And of course, please forgive me stepping in. Hello, Shell screen. down. Saying hi. Of course. Yeah. Um, Somebody's watching from Ireland. What up? Nice. What's up, Ireland? We got some Irish in our blood. That's where the name McGill comes from. But <laughs> I try not to claim that. No. Okay. No, this looks nicer. You try not to claim it. Why not? Because I don't know for like factual reasons, and I know nothing about Ireland, so uh, I I seem like you you get what I'm saying? Like somebody who just like. You have to learn about. Well, I want to do twenty three. That's what I want to do. But I do know that, you know, the people, our great, great, great grandfather, I believe, is Irish. Well, you know what? Don't quote me. Either Irish or Scottish, one of them. So, okay. So what we're going to do first is make the ricotta cheese. So, everyone, we are here for the long haul. Arish is my technical. So if you have questions, and of course, if you would like to use the, uh, you know, show some support, financial support, that would be great. We do have super chats on. And um, any of your questions that you ask through super chat gets stays highlighted. Hello, Missy Kate, and watching from about it. Botswana. Really? Botswana, hey, we international, y'all. I'm just opening this thermometer. I'm not cut out for this, you we guys. Have to get the, we have to get the milk a certain temperature. Where is that? So I have Uriel here on the phone. He's assisting me. What, 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 what I tell you to do? What I tell you to do? Yeah. It. And then I will, but like in the meantime, I'm gonna be on my phone. <laughs> Anyways, just so, say, so, mommy. Are you just came back from the back? Are going to do? No. no. No, I tell you what okay. you're going to do. Yeah, right. Okay. So now, if you would like to be on your phone while we're in between time, then. I guess it's not such a big deal. It's not such a big deal, but you know, initially. And my show, my show is coming, is going to help too. Yes, we're going to help. Uriel is gonna grate the ch this with the mozzarella cheese. Great, the mozzarella cheese. Oh, yeah, right you there. got gloves, my guy? Oh, what's the mozzarella cheese? Let's see, have that's have not gloves. enough for me. <laughs> 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 is it good? I don't need that, lasagna. Have have oh, wait, lasagna will be going in the oven, so it'll burn it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, having a kitchen full of people kind of distracts me a little bit, but I'm good, gonna get back See, on track. This is why I called it. It won't be three hours, people. It'll be longer. No, it's not. Why do you say that? Okay, oh, I asked y'all to pull me out this brown pot, and y'all didn't. Uh -huh. Did. Mommy, I pulled yeah, out did. everything else. That means your kids have issues. I thought we would, uh, Uriel was told to pull what? out everything. And this is what I didn't want to do. No, she was telling all of us. She was like, this is what needs to be done. While we were streaming. It's okay, Mommy. You got more than three hours. Hello, Mommy. No, it's not that. It's just, I'm going 
going to stay. Right? Since it's going to stay. This is what we're looking at. I mean, I'd be telling these people. That's right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, wait a minute. Will this... Will it work on this? Work. I mean, shouldn't it? I didn't think about it. I would put it like... Any kind of stove top, just be able to heat whatever pot no, on the stove. No, because this is like induction. And the thing is, I have to use for it to make the cheese. I have to use non-corrosive. So I it's don't know like what this that has non-corrosive, non-corrosive. I'm sorry, non-reactive, which would be like anything that's not, preferably not metal, something uh. glass or ceramic. Oh, this is about to really take. Cause I've seen a video. Oh my gosh, Listen, don't say I've that. I've seen a video of niggas making cheese. Okay, and they're not making a dish. They're literally just making cheese, and it took them. <sighs> okay. Oh well, do you want? No, nope, this pot doesn't work. This do you care to work. put this? Uh, How much does the pot still need to be in the camera? <laughs> How it's much? in the camera. I mean, okay. How much is the what? Never mind. Okay, so this pot doesn't work. The pot or done. Really? All right, do you do the ending dance, the outro okay. dance? Yeah, because okay, we know this pot. You works, should know. But it's shallow, so I hope that a gallon of milk can go in here. Yes, it can. Wait, oh, a gallon? Yeah. Oh. If we want to make enough cheese. With lasagna, it has to be a gallon. A gallon's not good. Wait, you're telling me there's about to be a gallon's worth of when? milk in this? What's his name? That's disgusting. No, no. Because, okay, so for those who don't know, what cheese is, is the coagulated proteins. What is that? Oh. There it go. The coagulated proteins in milk. They separate from the whey, which is usually what has the lactic, lactic acid, yes. Um, and what you have left are the complex proteins. So, you need a lot of milk to make enough cheese for what I. you need to you need do. to waste a lot of milk and, to make enough wow, cheese. Wow, wow, okay. Well, that's what, okay. Clearly, everyone, you can see that my eldest is somewhat of a... <laughs> A very opinionated human being. A pessimist. <laughs> Someone have a pessimist. So let's see how much we can get in here. That looks like death and poison. Wow. That was intense. <laughs> Sorry, I was saying thing. No I cursing. cursing. <laughs> I didn't curse. I said duffa. <laughs> we have our thermometer. That because this is shallow, it doesn't want to stay like that. Uh, maybe we can do this. Nope, that's not gonna work. Okay, so we'll just wait. Ooh, careful. No. <laughs> what? Nothing. Oh, no, I guess since she was, you were shaking, since you were, since, uh. Oh, because you're around? Yeah. Okay, so everyone, I found out after the fact, I'm here and I am trying to, I planned this whole thing to make, yeah, that's great, and um, my offspring tell me, I don't, even care. I don't even like it like that, I don't even like lasagna like that, but it's okay. She did the voice and everything. You see how she she said she yo I swear to God she be rolling her kids under the bus like dice yo. <laughs> she said. <laughs> she said. Get under there. It's all about communication. What are y'all doing to Tabasco? It's these children, mother. It's, it's, they don't it's, know it's how over to act. Somewhere. Oh yes. Let me tell y'all a real story, right? <laughs> Mommy already knew I didn't really care for the body. I don't remember that. <laughs> I just remember we had this, okay, quick story. I don't mean to cut.
cut you out of but I'm going to use the dress. So, when we live in one of our other homes, my daughter, my eldest, was the most popular, even though she doesn't like to say that because apparently she didn't really care. She didn't pay any mind. That. Pretty much the most popular person in her school. Because everybody ended up at our house. After school, everyone ended up at our house. And it was so interesting because, you know, let me turn this. Because I don't It was interesting. Uriel, really? No? I can't no close it. Spoons? I can't close it. Just give me the measuring spoon. There's no measuring There's no measuring spoon. It was interesting because, one, as far as I was concerned, my child was a, um introvert. Still so then when I would have these days that someone... Okay, we gotta get... I found it. I found it. Someone would be standing on my doorstep introducing themselves with someone else that I already knew, another teenager. And they would be like, hi, you know, this is so and so and so and so. And, you know, we go to school with Arisht. And they'd look at me like, can you come in? <laughs> <laughs> they'd look at her like lost puppies. Yes, pretty much. And they would just stay at the house. And, you know, being someone who, I need salt. Being someone who, oh, should I make this truffle flavor? Please don't. Being someone who did not go to school and did not experience that whole having friends thing, I was kind of excited like to go through this experience with my daughter, my parents, well, with all my children. They had different school experiences. Um, so I'd be like, yeah, sure. No, I guess it got to the point where I was considered the cool mom. Yeah, and plus she low key got a little army because I best believe I straightened them a little. Oh, and yeah. Then, listen. yeah, but you oh, want to know something else? Like, there was one time that, okay, no, I digress. Let me stay focused. This thing doesn't want to stay on. It's a problem. Okay. Let me stay focused. So, back to the lasagna. One, of course, lasagna is like a potluck. You know, you can feed a lot of people with lasagna. You make a big pan and that's it. You can feed a lot of people. So I decided to make lasagna. Actually, someone hired me to make a pan of turkey lasagna. So I decided because, of course, every day there was a whole crew of teenagers, more than likely hungry in my house. I was going to make two huge pans of lasagna, one for my client and one for the kids. But I put them to work. <laughs> they had to help. Now, this lasagna was so delicious. And back to the reason why I'm even telling this story. Oh, I remember this I lasagna. Was confused. I when my child told me recently, oh mommy, you make this lasagna, and it's not a big deal. I don't really like lasagna like that. <sighs> These are not my words, people. <laughs> <laughs> I said I don't care for lasagna. She doesn't care for of course, if mommy makes it, it's gonna, it's you know, gonna taste immaculate anyway. But as a person birthed from a, a bougie vajayjay, <laughs> I came out bougie too. So naturally, <laughs> yeah, there are certain things. <laughs> Wait, pause. Y'all see it curdling? Oh yeah. But no, it's too it, bright. It doesn't show up there. It's too bright. Yeah, it just looks white. Oh, okay. what does that mean? That's it. She's Maybe making ricotta. ricotta cheese. You oh. know what ricotta looks like? Okay. It's that crumbly stuff. Oh yeah, crazy. it has to reach the temperature of 140. What is it at? Um. Yeah. So naturally, I came out. Listen, people. I don't even see it. Don't. Don't eat food from a chef. That's all I can tell y'all. Because at this point, like, what else are you supposed to do? What, what do you are you mean? supposed to not have bougie tendencies because you eat from a chef every day? There's there's no way around that. Hello, D Walker. <laughs> Hi, D. How are you? You guys can comment. I believe if you're on Facebook, 
for you to come and tell you all. I'm trying to get out of the habit of saying you guys because even though, you know, I consider it kind of gender neutral, guys, of course, most people consider it men. So I'm trying to not use you guys. So you all, if you are on Facebook, I think to comment through StreamYard, you have to give Facebook permission to comment. But with YouTube, you can just comment. Or another no, Facebook content. Oh, D comment. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Awesome. It says so it whatever little like it's the logo by their profile page to show what they're commenting. Okay. From. Okay. So while that is working, what we need to do, and here we are. Yes, I'm going to put you to work more. This is my coffee. I don't need that anymore. Uh, we don't need this right now. We don't need this. Want to show? Well, who's gonna open the? can of tomatoes because after we do this then I'm going to mix up the dough for the pasta huh watch those open up the tomatoes I don't know how to open a can wow <laughs> teach him there you go we're teaching our son how to I only teach that on we get the fool y'all see him y'all see the fool no, <laughs> you, can't, you can't see him <laughs> okay one thing that we can what you can do is look for there is a steamer basket, a plastic steamer basket. What I need that, that to help that? drain this. What is that? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> you feed the bowl? Hold on, hold on. Let me look at it a little bit. Hold on. A steamer basket. I'll open it. Listen, at least you looking shit up because some people are, they just like asking questions. And it's like, y'all do know y'all. This doesn't even feel warm. Right? It looks like it started curling before it even. Yeah, like that makes it sus. It's not warm. Yes. We're, we have that? We, that we do. It, went, it came open. with the rice cooker. And I need both. It might open. be in there. Fresh tomatoes open. And I need the uh, tomato paste. So the tomato paste and the crushed tomatoes. This is for a case we need to make more. Oh, Moncho, everyone. Oh. <sighs> Did you have that identity? We're good. Nothing broke. So this is my my new um pasta maker that I am using. I had one, but it got lost in moving, so I had to get a new one. Uh, we're gonna use this to flatten the noodles. Can you get the Impossible Burger out of the fridge? It's in the fridge, not the freezer. You don't see it. If you don't see it, never mind. No worries. No worries. No worries. No, I already found it. Oh. No. You already found what? The impossible burger? Oh, and the turkey burger. Wait. I see nothing. The burger or the meat? The meat. Right there. That. There's an impo There's an actual burger in there? No. No, but you said burger, so. Okay. <laughs> when show says, I don't pay much attention to things make, that don't involve me. Okay, we're gonna make two. The can opener? No. Oh. We're gonna make two lasagnas. One out of Impossible Burger for vegetarians, and one with turkey for. Someone says, "Is that your sister?" Who? Michelle yeah. Rivera. I have all my children that your sister? here, but if you want to get technical. I mean, yeah, yeah technically. I mean, technically, yes. yes. But her role is my child. She's my daughter. Two zero nine nine, Nicole. I love your baking and cooking. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. I'm it really just little... two on this. Oh look. Okay, yeah, it is. I think it's yeah, it's getting hot. Okay, great. So we're at a little over a hundred right now. Please don't. <laughs> It's not as motivating as you think. It's still it. too too white to see. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess if you look at the more the edge of the pan, okay, then okay. you can see texture. But yeah, in the center. Oh yeah, if you lift it up, you you can kind of see the curves. I don't put enough citrus acid in. There. Yeah, she says yeah. That's that's what I meant. Okay. Oh, as far as the sister thing. Yeah. Oh really? That's what you meant? Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, anybody that's on here, I'm. I'm assuming that you're subscribers if you're here because you got the notification that I was doing a live. She says, um, "Aziva, I love your strength." 
Thank you. Uh, who was that? Same. Was Nicole? Or? No, Michelle. The oh, one Michelle, that says Michelle. that your sister. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. It's always encouraging. Okay. That's going. Um, I guess let me lay out the cheese cloth. I would go looking for the other one, but. Two hours, it's only been 25 minutes. Two hours. Okay. Because there was some science involved in the, and there is some science involved in the ricotta cheese making, and it's honestly, you know, full of disclosure, I haven't made ricotta cheese in a long time. So, and when I did make it, I used lemon juice, not citrus acid. The reason why you can use lemon juice is because it has citrus acid in it. Can you put down on the tickers? On the tickers to batter the break in the cheese. So you know which I mean, part of the video. And so you know that it's gonna be really long. What? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Behave, children. <laughs> How do you enter it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> add banner. That's like song of the prison. Should I cut this? Yeah, it doesn't seem like you need that much. What happened to the other chair? The other stool? Why is there only That's one? Oh. That's going to have to change. Sit on that. I don't want to hear it. Alright, y'all have to be patient with me and my focus right now. Because talking and cooking at the same time, I was pretty um, ambitious when I decided to do this. You know what's funny is that when I do stuff like this, I talk anyway. I mean, I do, but like try to figure that out, you know, and talking about a specific topic. Like, I think our topics are supposed to be back to school. Oh, you have topics in this match? Yeah, back to school, question and answers, and self, self care <laughs> and self love. Um, so children are going back to school. Yay. Um, Love yourself. And what else did you say? You just say yeah. There's Q and A. You just say yeah. What? Nicole says, "What's your favorite meal and dessert and favorite drink to make, please?" Favorite meal and dessert. Gosh. Okay. And My drink. favorite meal is pretty much anything chocolate. I'm vegan. Though. So, you mean favorite dessert? I mean chocolate? dessert. I'm sorry, dessert. See. I eat dinner to have dessert, even though I don't get to have it all the time. Right now, <laughs> my favorite drink, and the kids <laughs> can attest, is taro milk tea with boba. I think she said, oh, no. I then, literally, I could probably eat that for dinner and dessert. And then she says, me. she says, what kind of music do you like to listen to while you bake and cook? <sighs> Reggae. Okay. And K-pop. Reggae and K-pop. So, uh, but of course, and that's what I was thinking, you know, I was like, darn, I can't even play music, you know, because of whole permissions and rights and all that stuff. So, 
I keep taking this out, but ooh, the card house. We just need it to get to 140. Wow. <laughs> it's taking more than three hours. No, it's not. Mommy, just are you halfway minutes. done the cheese? Are you at least halfway done the cheese? Yeah. What you gotta do? What you gotta do? After I strain it, then I just leave it to drain. And then oh. Oh. mix the okay. pasta. Yeah. Then mix the pasta dough because that has to rest. Okay, because we are a half resting, hour in. While that is resting, then we will make tomato sauce. We might be done sooner. Although I, I was going to do, oh no, well that's easy. Because then while the lasagna is in the oven, then we're going to make dessert, which is the peach cobbler sundaes. Will it be that good? Okay. I don't good. know. Okay, peach just turned me off. I never really thought. I'm that. having hot with this. <laughs> get it, get it. Is it open? Yeah, it created a little mess. Okay, that's fine. All right, <sighs> just push them to, to the side. Do you want to know what my favorite dessert and meal was? What's your favorite dessert and meal? Um, my favorite dessert. Pizza. Yeah. All Pierre says, save my please, thanks. <laughs> I think he means save his plate. Oh. Save his plate, thanks. Is Mosa in the waiting room? Where would I see that? Person, one person. You don't see guests? No? Yes, no. Yeah. Okay. Nope. Okay, we can start. I'm going to start ladling some of these out. Ooh, aborted my clothes. Good. I have a camera. How long is that supposed to? Like, do you just keep letting it cook so you can make as much as possible? Um, what the way? I mean, as soon as it starts curling, that's it. Yeah, that much. is the cheese. Well, so you no, just scoop you can it out. Let it cook longer. Like this, I gotta turn it down because now it's getting too hot. I'm getting a tofu filling. This is how you make tofu, uh, just using soda. Nicole sugar. says, I have a question for you, please. Would you cook and bake for your mother and father? That's deep. I mean, <laughs> at this point, no. though. <laughs> no. Um... <laughs> Over my dead body. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no. The last time I cooked for my mom, I've not spoken to her in a while. The last time I cooked for her... Wow, what did I make? I feel like I made donuts or something, and we had a lot oh, left oh, over, so oh, yeah. I sent them to her house. Yeah, I thought that was a waste. Yeah, you always think it's a waste. Arish, Arish is not about the sharing life. Why do you keep all? giving people our That's people? not even true. You see, as you look, what I tell you, that we're, we're, we're dice, okay? <laughs> and she throws it out in the bus. Okay, no, no, let me rephrase that. Arish is very critical about who she gives to. My child is very giving because that's how I raised her. But she is critical who she gives to. And she's always like, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny that I don't even say it like that, but it sounds correct. <laughs> that's the attitude that you're saying it with. <laughs> I need uh, something bigger or deeper and ladle. She's always like, mommy, I mean, you know, didn't this person do this? <laughs> yeah. And didn't they do that? And didn't they not do this? And didn't they not do that? So, yeah. Let's just say. Plus, she's protective of me. That's the other thing. Yeah, because honestly, all that stuff I don't really do for myself. <laughs> like, I mean, I do to a certain degree, but I'm, I'm still even a lot more like kinder and forgiving when it comes to like me personally but when it comes to mommy oh hell no someone look at her wrong yeah 
then it's like pretty much mommy they don't deserve nothing from you yeah pretty much so yeah she is not too thrilled about me sending any food over to her grandma yeah. her grandma's house so yes i won't be cooking for now she says, are you planning on having any more babies, please, or adopting babies in your hometown? Now, adoption, I mean, I want to have another child. I do want to have another child, and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that I lost one. Um, yeah. So I yeah, I'm rooting for child. surrogacy, though. Surrogacy? I mean, yeah. It's not like I did anything to flatten my stomach or anything. Well, so why should, if you can't wait, have another kid. Wait, seriously, as in someone else carrying my baby? Yeah, we talked about it. Remember, if, you, if it's too late and you can't have another kid, then I think you that might I would just adopt. Oh. I'm trying to get this whole gallon of milk done, everyone. So we about to put... Oh, yeah, this actually start. Ooh, that started curling already. That was actually weird. Wait, so... Hmm, chemical reaction. Yeah, pretty much chemical reaction. Okay, we need that. This is straining. I'm gonna get as much in here so I can get as much done at one time as possible. Because we are making two. So Oh, these dishes are kind of shallow, so it's not going to be a deep lasagna. Adopting from my area. I do, I am interested in becoming a foster parent uh, because my children and their experiences in foster care was, um, stupid. <laughs> yeah, well, she can tell you. But, you know, I think that there has to be a lot of What's the word? Rehabilitation. It's not rehabilitation. There's another word for it. There has to be a lot of. Can start with a C. I, I don't think so, but I, I don't know. But a so lot, <laughs> a lot needs to change, you know, in the foster care system. And the crazy thing is, is that these government bodies know this, but for some reason, she said, "Are your own now. children planning on having babies of their own?" Yeah. Yeah, I'm planning on having twins. Don't know when it'll happen, but it'll happen by my will. So there you go. Arish answered, Marshall answered, Uriel is not answering. And Aloba is not here. Aloba's planning on getting somebody knocked up. Yeah. Not on purpose. More like by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but he'll have kids either way. Yeah, so yes, they do plan on having children. Except for Yuria, I guess Yuria is gonna die alone. <laughs> no, he's not. He's thirteen. He oh no, not, he's right. He's going house. back to the future. He should not. <laughs> We're not doing this. We're not doing this. He should not be thinking about having children. He's thirteen. No, no his wife is in the future. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, I get it. He has I get it. Yes, I will have children now. <laughs> not now. Yes, you will have children. End sentence. <laughs> Um, Louise Heaney, you would be a great foster mom. I used to foster years ago. Really? Uh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I, I think so. I think that if I don't have another child, then I'll definitely do that, become a foster parent, and uh, try to help out in that respect because there are a lot of children that need good parents. I appreciate the compliment, and, you know, maybe if, when that happens... I know who to ask about it. Nicole says, would you be happy to be a grandma? <laughs> She's going to have a love-hate relationship with that fact. Good idea. Because... She's gonna look in the mirror and she's gonna be like, my time isn't up yet. But then she's gonna look at two generations down and be like, shit, where'd all time go? Would I be happy to be a grandparent right now? Um... Well, you know what? Let me say oh, this. I'm just, I can say this. <laughs> what did he say? That probably not. I said probably are. 
Um, babies. I love babies. I love children. I have not been around children in, in a minute. Oh, yeah. So... She I would be mad at the kid, but happy for the baby. <laughs> <laughs> if any of my children showed up with a kid or showed up pregnant or whatever, don't get me wrong, the stress and responsibility would have its negative impacts, but I'd get over it quick. And I'd just be like, okay, you know, let's work this out. Right. Let's work this out and prepare for the baby. Well, what else am I yeah, gonna do? Yes, a baby. Yes, a baby. Yeah. It's a lie. But it's a, done is done at this so point. So you're telling me if I were to get knocked down and you, you think she would throw up to the streets? <laughs> <laughs> and what, wait, what? Let's so finish your question. In, okay, if you're telling me if I were to get knocked up, right, uh, the thing the next, honestly, couple um, months, yeah. And you get mad, your anger wouldn't last long? <laughs> oh, no, it'll probably last the rest of your life. <laughs> she just won't show it. Yeah, she just won't show it. <laughs> I mean, I, okay, I wouldn't be angry. I don't think angry is the word to use. I would be very baffled. <laughs> she'll, be, she'll, be, she'll be flabbergasted. Yeah, thank you. You got that from a little bit. I'd be flabbergasted. I'd be like, how in the... Because this is the thing, specifically with Marshall, because of her PKU, her being pregnant, her getting pregnant, it, it, it's not anything to play with. She would have to make sure that her fee levels are perfect while she is pregnant. And I know that's going to come with a lot of responsibility and some stress. So, you know, I'd like to have some help by then in the form of assistants and nannies and everything else while that happens. But, you know, what do they say? We make plans and God laughs. Huh? We make plans and God laughs. Who says that? It's, it's like a saying. saying. Yeah. Where does that... Oh. I make plans and God gives me a high five. <laughs> <laughs> and then I tell God, only you. Because I do not do high fives. I feel like no, we I have don't. a smaller a, a spoon with a smaller um holes, right? Yeah. No, but she has yeah, that, that metal one, right? Yes, yeah, the metal she one. Does it's do just hugs, high fives. I don't she want does, metal. She does do hugs though. No, the fuck I don't. <laughs> wow. Excuse <laughs> you. <laughs> Mommy, yeah, it's all the show's fault. I because to have my sister. I she triggered say, me, okay? I was about to say, she triggered you. I just want to wow. say, I'm not one who, I don't curse very often. I definitely <laughs> didn't used to. My children did yeah. not grow up around me cursing. That is definitely a lie. I'm sorry. Mommy. Okay, <laughs> except for him. Except for Uriel, only because he's younger. My other children, my old, my adult children, they did not grow up around me cursing. Like, I did not curse um, around them. I'm just not someone who uses profanity like that. But this one right here, Miss Arish, wherever she got it from, her spirit, the people she was around, I don't know what it was. I was a saint back in the day. Honestly, she made me more comfortable with <laughs> dropping F-bombs. <laughs> Empowering to it's because of my comedic flair. Wow. Nicole says, do you go to church every Sunday? Do you believe in polygamy? Um, do I go to church every... No, I do not go to church every Sunday. I only go to church when I have a dream to go to church or I get, like, a strong urge. And usually every time that, that happens, there definitely is a message that I can relate to or I have met someone there that has been instrumental in my life or my healing journey. But I don't go every Sunday. I don't like belong to a church. I did have a friend who I loved dearly. Um, he was the pastor of a church. I did attend that church, but he passed away some years back and I haven't been since. And then of course, with the pandemic, you know, church shut down. So 
definitely haven't been since then. I have actually signed in though to the church lives from the church at the church that my friend used to pastor to see, you know, how they're doing, what's going on. But that would be one of those times where intuitively I have decided like, oh, you know, something is telling me that I should go to church. And the polygamy. Polygamy. Do I believe in polygamy? Yeah. Um, I do think it works. I think that in certain, in the cultures where it's normal and it's practiced regularly, it's a good thing. I think there are a lot of benefits and I respect anyone. I think that consenting adults, however they decide to structure their relationships, their romantic relationships, that is their business, it's up to them. But for me, and I feel, I feel, no, I feel like here in America, the men are just a little too irresponsible yeah. to be polygamous. They're just too irresponsible to be polygamous. Let's see. How much yeah, me, is this about? I believe in female polygamy. Yeah. <laughs> and women having more than one well, husband. Well, polyamory, right? Well, yeah. because polygamy is specifically a man with more than one wife, and then polyamory covers both. Yeah, I believe in that, but I think that men already have too much power. They really don't need more power. So y'all don't need more than one woman, men. Y'all, y'all should be good. I don't know. Are there any men on there? Did the one gentleman who asked the same plate? Oh, the views go up and down. Yeah. So, so people like there was this whole thing. I show us the whole thing with Nick Cannon. Oh yeah. I watched that whole interview. So Nick Cannon, for those who don't know, especially for my people who are in other countries, Nick Cannon is a rapper. Did you just fall asleep? Yeah. Look at his eyes. What? Let me give you something to eat. No, can I give him a stomach I'm tired. Under the bed. Your stomach hurts. Yes, I have a yield. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. He was just saying me some Having stomach pains and being hungry is two different things. Why I'm didn't you eat anything, Uriel? What is it to eat? You can drink that milk in that bottle. I think there are certain questions that I shouldn't answer on camera. <laughs> too late. There's plenty of things. Oh, it's okay. There's only like three people watching. Well, first of all, I brought, I bought, I think I bought you insurance. Did it come? No. I bought you insurance. I don't know if it came. There it probably did. There's there's cereal. I had cereal there's last stuff night. To make sandwich. Wait a minute, you was up cooking this morning. What are you talking about, I, mommy? I I what was, was not that egg sandwich. No, it was it was bread and cheese. Oh, I'm about to eat some. It wasn't. Uh, no, seriously. Uh, just remember that dill that we made. No, no, literally, it was two slices of bread and. Then okay, two of I'm counting the milk from now. I mean, I'm counting okay, the eggs okay. from now on. Okay. I'm just saying. All right, y'all. We just gonna have to work with what we have here because we gotta move on to the next thing. So this has to drain for a little while. We still have some curds in here. Um, can I go to bed, please? Go to bed, no, girl. You can stay up because you have been getting up late, late at night. Mommy, it's not my fault. Do you believe in I'll be falling asleep early. No, no, no. Hold on. Let me, let me tell you Do you want to run this? Anyways. Last night? I'm just asking, because I can get up. Anyways, last uh, night? We can alternate, so, I guess. Anyways, last night I went to bed at 7, right? Fell asleep, woke up at 12, and I couldn't go back to sleep. So I got, and I I was trying to go back to sleep for like an hour and a half, and I just couldn't. So I got up, I made me some food, went on the computer, and I've been up since. Which you did to yourself. Because How? You know, because I keep waking over up the course of what, two, three months, you have not been going to bed correctly. What are you talking about? Uh, right? So okay, naturally, okay. you're going to get argue. insomnia and all that other stuff on the side. We're not going to argue over the live stream. Oh, we're not arguing. We're just discussing yeah, about sexuality. Yeah, arguing. Um, yeah, arguing. Someone says, do you believe in homosexual and lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, or questioning, and two-spirit community? Because the Bible says something, something I do cry because I'm bisexual? I don't fully understand that question, but I think I don't think LGBT something community I is something to believe in. Things that we have to believe in 
would suggest if you have to believe in something it would suggest that there is a possibility that it doesn't exist and clearly people choosing their sexual orientation who they choose to love and be sexually attracted to exists so that's not something for me to believe in um again so i guess what do you support it or, or i don't know i'm gonna hang this here Drink. I think I gotta drink the rest of that. Okay. Um. Yeah. Again, if you're an, if you're an adult, consenting adult, what you do in your sex life is not my business. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. It's for God to judge, not me. So I love all people. Whatever they decide to do with their grown people lives again i have to keep repeating grown people lives because as a survivor of childhood sexual abuse any i remember there was a point that they were trying to scientists were trying to compare um pedophilia with homosexuality that didn't make sense to me but you know anyway yeah one has nothing to do with other one includes someone who does not have the mental capacity to make a decision or to understand the impacts of their decisions when it comes to sex and sexuality. She says, can you come to Montreal, Quebec, Canada? Tickets should be $100, please. <laughs> Are you going to coordinate that? Yeah, I like think, that. is that, that's Nicole? Yeah. Nicole, I think I remember, did you comment before on something about me coming to Canada and I said I was going to look into it? Yeah, I am all for travel. I got my passport, so yes, I want to travel. I want to see the world because I've not really gotten a chance to do that. So, all right, this is going to have to be enough for Papa. Let's just say that. Um, I'm going to set this here because we've got to move on to the next thing which is making the pasta. See, I, see Mama, I told you it would take an hour. For the cheese? Yeah. So we're gonna put this out the way right now. An hour. Well, almost an hour, it's 52 minutes. So not an hour. Don't need that, I think. It's an hour. See, since I have the cheese hanging there, I have to watch what I... Semolina flour. And what eggs? Basic pasta, salt, eggs, water, olive oil. What are you doing? Is my skin that soft? I don't, I don't feel trust anything. them. There's something on his hand. I don't trust them. Well, did it come in? Where's my iPad? Because I think I wonder if the link didn't work. If it was that the link didn't work. Can you can you look in the linen closet and give me a dish towel, please? A dish towel. Yes, yeah, a dish towel. Thank you. Oh, she sent an attachment. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like there's not more than one chair. I'm just going to forward this to... Here. Some people real quick so they can see if they can get on. Thank you, sir. Oh, I did move it, didn't I? <laughs> I need to see. Okay. Here. We've got some of the 
flower here. Here, take that. Now, yeah, I know y'all, you got, you all have seen Barefoot Contessa, um, what's her name, Guida, all kinds of people making pasta, and they put it on the counter and knead it all up in the count on the counter. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm using a bowl. I'm using a bowl. So now we could still make the well, right? Can you still see here? Don't need the milk because I, I I I just forgot that I moved the camera and I didn't even think about the fact that no this one the overhead um. one. Oh um two zero nine nine Nicole said I love your outfit. Oh thank you. And your children's outfit. You yeah. like, yeah, like, <laughs> what? So enthusiastic. What? Oh, one show already. One show. <laughs> and but I love. Nicole. I think I got it from Hollister. It's one of those um, like jumpsuits, little romper things. It's really comfortable. And said, "I love reading your book." Really, I would love to hear more about what you think about my book. Did you finish it? Now she's just repeating herself. <laughs> just letting them so they can hear you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking so, so you My comments are being judged. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And in the live that stayed. Yeah. 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 I have to give. I have to give. I have to give them more on on camera etiquette. I just want to make sure that the food portion. I have on see. camera etiquette. What are you talking about? Mommy, our lack of on-camera etiquette, it's content. It's... Says the person who one who was doing testing earlier was not about, like... I was a little camera shy, okay? <laughs> Ooh. I'm good with that with not putting the shell in, but I just dropped the whole thing. All-purpose flour. All-purpose flour um, is made from a different wheat. This is Durham wheat, which is made, I think it's a summer wheat is used to make it. <laughs> oh, my God. What? Oh, she said, would you like to be in a movie or create a movie with your children? Example, like a cartoon. Oh, yeah, we just thought about that. A movie? Oh, be a cartoon. Oh. Yeah, I least did mention that. Yeah, we had we had spoken about doing reality series. Okay, I do need a little water in this. Doing a reality series, um, a film that is based on my book, selling the rights to it. This is soft. I feel like I'm gonna squeeze. Oh, she said. Yes, I finished your book. It made me cry. Oh. Well, just know that with those tears. Wait, hold on. Let me turn around. I know Unashamed the Life Tainted has a lot of tough parts to read, and of course. You know, knowing that the things I speak about, the things that I happened to me, did actually happen to a real person. I ask that anyone that reads the book, after you get past the devastation, that's a, that's, that's an intense word, but not really. <laughs> the devastation of it, once you get past the devastation of it, I ask you to please take solace in knowing that look at me now. <laughs> look at me now. Look at us now. So we made it through, survived, and that is the whole point of me writing the book because um, 
a lot of people don't know. I mean, yes, and I'm unashamed by the title. And I shouldn't be shamed. Survivors should not be ashamed. But unfortunately, often we are because we take on the responsibility. I don't want this to be too wet. Of what happened to us. Ew! What? He had feet on me. Excuse me. I would have thought he threw up on you. I was thinking that. And the way you were. Shane, I'm gonna say that because I was shame for a long time. I remember when I got my kids back and I had to um get them birth certificates, not birth certificates, I'm sorry, social security cards. And I had to just come out and tell Mom, Mommy, get your phone. I'm not doing anything. No, tell him to go scrub his teeth because they stink. <laughs> Y'all talking about stink feet when I'm making food? <laughs> I'm content. How many people want to? Imagine. <laughs> Feeling the feet and then smelling the feet right after. What is wrong though? Because now you have usually, I don't usually have a problem with your feet smelling. I don't know. It just it, it just like I, I lately know. is it hormones? No. Why are we getting on that one? I need someone to give me some um, parchment paper. My life has to go on the table, right? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Oh, it's one. <laughs> Mommy, come and go. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, back to what I was saying. So, yeah, please. Yeah, take solace in the fact that one, the perpetrator is in jail, suffering, and two, Parchment paper. See right there? The pack of parchment paper? Yeah. And two, um, I'm free and happy. So it's in the past. Yes, some of it still affects me. But my life is so much better now. So much better now. They tell us, they said I gotta need this for 10 minutes. I should have put this crap in the kitchen aid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, she's not a chef. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so dorm wheat is different. It's definitely grainier, right? See, and more yellow. It, are you seeing it? Can you take, because I don't know if she's doing <laughs> Technical, like, for all I know, there are questions. There are no questions. Oh, right. I guess I finished. Yeah, there are no questions. Yes, I finished. Oh, yeah. The last one she read it. Yeah, I finished. Okay. There are guests, Michelle. Brenda. Oh. Do I click her? Yes. To let her read. Add to stream. What up, Brenda? Why are you adding me to the stream? Oh, it's a no. good thing my camera is not on. What? Well, what? How did? That's what I said. I see her. No, 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 no. I purposefully did not turn the camera on. Why am I being added? Can I be in the backstage? That's where I was. <laughs> I don't like this technology, bro. You know, it's all invasive. So you're making you the, the okay? Movie? So you being added. The link that I send you is for you to be a part of the stream. That not means I have to comb it. my hair. That means I have to comb my hair. Like, I'm not prepared for all of that. But I can. Uh, so, so okay, put me back so you, you just want to say audio only? I'm not prepared. You don't. Let's not talk about the fact that. I'm just talking about the lasagna that you're making and that, the fact that I've missed most of this already. The what fact is, that you what? Why so you you're, you're, needing, you're needing the dough now. What is in the dough? Yes. I'm meeting a dough now. Can you see? I can. I definitely do a great. The quality is great. I can see everything very clearly. Okay. Awesome. Cool. 
Yes, I'm needing to go now. You got it? Okay. I'm good. I had to mute it for like 10 minutes. I was telling them, I don't know kitchen why aid. I didn't. Kitchen aid. Let's, let's start the kitchen Yeah, aid. exactly. Exactly. Why are we not doing the kitchen aid? What she said? Why? I didn't hear you. Why are we not doing kitchen aid? Thank Brenda. you. I didn't think about that. Why yeah. is that what? Because it, you see the camera set up. Okay, okay, yeah. I could have moved the kitchen aid over here, but honestly, there's too many stages. Yeah. So, but I'm almost finished the kneading. You've been doing then that for 10 minutes? Rest for a few minutes, huh? You've been kneading it for 10 minutes? Um, It's been about what? Seven oh, minutes? Oh wow! I've been talking. See, that's that's where cooking and conversations come. Okay. Okay. When you finish the cheese, it was at fifty-two. Now it's at one hundred and five. So yeah, I guess about ten minutes. Yeah. Give or take. So, so what type of lasagna are we making today? We are making the pasta one with impossible burger, and the other one with turkey. Ooh. Ground turkey. Ooh. So I'm doing two two kinds. I made the cheese. If you was not here for that, no, I missed that. Okay. Well, you got to catch that on the replay. Yeah. You're real. Okay, I, I didn't even do anything. Stop. I didn't do anything. Let so, me give you something so else. I, I don't have to give no, 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 no. is is trying to. Uh, I guess I, he's trying to stay up. I didn't do anything. She just told you to watch on the little music. Okay. okay. So I can't see no. Uriel in the frame because I'm in the frame. So I think you should send me back so Uriel can be in the frame. Uh, he wasn't in the frame either. He's okay. in the back. Just trying to cause trouble. No, I, I, I was just sitting here. What a God. She, I know, there's, a, there's another guest that you just missed. That must be Mo, China. So I should take this out in order to click it. Okay, just watch your finger over the camera part. Yes, because all I see is oh, finger now. I, mm -hmm. I was just listening to Brenda. There's not much to hear. Hello, hello. Hola. Hi, Auntie Mo. Hey, hey, what's it? Mm -hmm. Breathing. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you guys, what are you guys making? <laughs> oh, that's right. Lasagna, right? Yeah. Yeah. Joe Okay, I think I'm good. With the needing. Yeah, the frame is wider now. I can see the whole kitchen now. Yeah. Cause it's like when there's three people, it cuts it um vertically. Okay. So it cuts a lot of the other videos off, but then adding on Timo, then it went into the four corner thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Better. So that works. All right. So that's going to rest. Wow, nice. See, we're moving along. We're moving along. Now we're what? gonna make sauce. Wait, what does the back of your jumper say? Chill out. Okay, yeah, that's, I need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a cute jumper. Thank you. Thank you. Who was it that liked it? Nicole liked it or Michelle? I think it was Nicole. That pot does not work on this. So I have to a different pot. Sorry about that. Loudness. So that's the impossible burger meat. Yeah. That looks what so impossibly real. What she say? Brenda, what did you say? It looks real. It does. What looks real? The impossible burger. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, that's that's pretty that's scary. That's mean. Well, I guess because of the fact that they took, they take is heme, which apparently is in every living thing, and that is what gives the meatiness. And the whole thing with meat is that um, it has a lot of heme in it. So they took it from plants and made the impossible burger. See, this is why I shouldn't be Sorry. on this thing because I have so much I, I want to say and I cannot say based on what you just said. There's so much about meat that I can talk about that I cannot talk about on this live. Send, send me in the backstage because there's no, there's no value that I can add to this conversation. Because she wants to go back to the backstage. I'm telling you. She says, 
you can't you can't have me on you cannot have me on a public forum i don't have any decorum because the jokes that are coming in my head right now are not appropriate it's not okay, Brenda. I've already cursed a couple times on this live. It's not even <laughs> cursing. I can't even be myself. I have to now censor my thoughts. She wants to talk about me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much that has happened recently with me that I would love to talk about and I can't talk about. Oh, my God. <laughs> I am not made for pu public vo um, um, viewing. I really am not. So let me continue <laughs> watching this show. Okay. Practice. Practice makes perfect. Okay. So I am cheating with the garlic. Yo, so I came up with this thing, right? Because I love roasted garlic. Uh -huh. And I have just been putting them in whole into my cooking. Um. Oops. <laughs> Mom, I need to spray bottles. So I've just been roast. I've been putting them in the air fryer. Oh, wow. And, and just eating them like snacks. Nothing is wrong with you. No, nothing's wrong with me. No, no it's wrong with her. <laughs> it's not bitter. It's not bitter because the reason why you'll get garlic that is bitter is because it's been cooked at too high a heat and too fast and burn so it gets bitter. But if you don't do that, it's actually have a very, it actually has a very pleasing flavor. Wait, what are you talking about? It's, it's a little sweet. It does have a little aromatic um, oil that comes out, but still it's garlic. I can't get over that part. You're talking about eating garlic? Yeah, she yeah. Wants, yeah she's Crazy. eating garlic that she's tossing in the air fryer. Have yeah, you, put it in the air fryer. Put it in the air fryer and sprinkle some truffle salt on it. No, thank have you. you Oh my gosh, it was so good. Have you it, it was the truffle, Brenda. No, it wasn't. I'm you. I tasted it without the truffle. And it was so good. See, I can't even say that this conversation is completely coincoid. I can't even say that. I just said it. I no, it's not like because it. you're thinking about truffle butter. Damn, why is this? <laughs> it started burning. Because you're thinking about truffle butter, Brenda. I can't. Have you, have you it's tried like burning, the, burning. Uh, <laughs> I don't garlic. want to hear about no truffle butter. That's like, nasty. I'm literally seeing the smoke. Please, fire alarm, do not turn on. Oh, I know, right? Let's get rid of it now. Go on, that, that, that Here bag we of, go. That bag of garlic? Huh? That, that bag of garlic? How, how long does it last you? Well, actually, this is the first time. I have to turn the fan Brenda, on. Brenda, it won't last that long. Yeah, it's not going to last that long. But I this is the first time that I've gotten a bag like this. I got it from Costco, your favorite place. Of course. And I'm like, oh, and I considered not getting it because I'm like, well, am I really going to use this all before they go bad? But then I realized, I'm like, that's what I thought about the roasted garlic thing, putting it in the air fryer. And I'm like, shoot, the way I like it, just whole and stir fries, maybe I could just like eat it like that, you know, like a snack. Yeah, she'd be bugging. Yeah, that's definitely bugging. So the 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 bag of all Costco's are not made the same because I've never had seen that bag at Costco. What'd she say? Uh, y'all might have to translate some of because the the mic oh, is not loud at all. I can't hear. Oh, okay. No, she's talking about what Brenda said, but there wasn't a message. There's a comment. There's a comment. Um. Nicole said, you are so famous. Everybody loves you very much. Percentage. What? What? Rainbow, rainbow. Well, thank you, Nicole. I'm very flattered, but oh, I don't know. 100%. 100%? <laughs> yeah, I didn't say that part. I don't know. How do you know? Um, I'm famous I am. I'll take your word for it. Okay. This is my pile. I'm just piling everything over there. I need wooden. So, so in the pan is olive oil. And so what? It, what's in the pan is olive oil. Olive and oil and um, yeah, and the garlic. I'm doing the sauce now. Uh, so how do you? Yeah. The, ca the camera over the food is um uh, is. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Wow. But I need to ask a composer for me. Yeah. Or you can do that. <laughs> I don't want to put okay, too I mean, much stuff now. on the back. What? It's visible now. 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. So when is the pot isn't visible in this camera? Okay. It's, it's so funny because it was cut off in this camera. Aziza, your full product ghetto production crew is doing very well. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you very much. My full production. My your ghetto production crew. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brenda. Thank you. They're That's in training. training. They're not ghetto. They're in training. That's right. That's right. You're not ghetto. You're in training. Who said that? I'm not ghetto. I'm booed. There you go. <laughs> wow. I'm wow. Is is that base? Is that basil? No, this is oregano. Okay. This is basil, though. Okay. And I'm using the fresh oregano, and um, and then I'm gonna use the basil. Okay, so I have a I have a discussion topic, and it's relevant because you're making food. Does okay. That do, does it have to do with me? Okay, sorry. No, not okay. not specific. Um, so as people, or as a country, or as the the black community. What is doing more harm to our bodies? What we're eating or what we're drinking? What, what we're, we're eating or what we're doing? Drinking. 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 Oh, oh, wow. Honestly. Oh, wow. I feel like it's pretty even. I think it's, I think it's, I really think it's both. Um, it's very hard to say because I have friends that don't drink at all, eat some crap. And I eat crap and I don't drink. Right. But even when you think about drinking, about you know liquor things like that think about all of the sugary beverages right how many people are not drinking water you know soda and just a lot of garbage um but, but, some people you know they feel like oh they're dieting and oh i can't have this cake or i can't have dessert but you think about the beverage that's going with your dinner there's more sugar in that sometimes and more trash in that than there is in a piece of cake or some ice cream i know but if you think about it a lot of people the drink is a chaser so it's right. really the food. It really it usually when someone is eating something, they crave a drink. Right. But usually if you're drinking, you know, unless it's paired with something, I think that we we have we have a bigger problem with the eating than okay. we do with the drinking. I because, think that uh well I only drink water. I don't even drink juice and taro bubble tea. <laughs> and taro bubble tea. Oh, only <laughs> <laughs> but other than that. Yeah, as far as um drinking, I think it might be drinking, honestly, because between how much alcohol and the sugar that's in everything, and you know a lot of drinks, it's not only sugar, it's salt as well. Yeah, yeah but that's why I kind of say both. Because I say both, yeah. Both things have so much sugar and so much salt yeah. in them. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I guess drinking does have the extra, like, the alcohol. It has that little plus because it's alcohol. Right. But, um... I don't drink alcohol. Yeah, and then you have, like, preservatives in food and all that other stuff. I'm just like... Right. You know. Macho, what do you think? That's, I think, honestly, I think it's pretty even. Hmm. Because I think that I when persons are drinking, they tend to crave food. And you know when you're when you know I just feel like it's a chaser with drinking. I think that we do drink a lot in our community, but it's just obvious that with the food itself is just the bigger issue. With uh, with obesity being leading, not to say that alcohol can't lead to obesity, it can, but with obesity is because of food consumption. So if you're drinking, um, and then you're craving and eating on top of that, that's that's multiplying the calories. Okay. So I think that the food is a bigger issue. Okay, I think I think it might be, and I mean, obviously, it's a huge issue, and they're both contributing factors. But I think it actually what we're drinking. I think mm. drinking might do more harm to our bodies because even when you think about people who have, um, and the majority of people in America, the majority of the Black community doesn't have great diets, but even for the people who don't have great diets, they still a lot of ever eat. Hello? You're breaking up. I can't already hear you. Hear me now? Yeah, no, you're breaking up. Oh, I don't know what to do about that. Can you guys hear me now? Okay, yep. now it's better. Yeah, a lot of people are still ever eating healthy things. But there are, I feel like, and obviously I could be wrong, but from my perspective, there are, are far more people who are never eating healthy things. A lot of people drink problems. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot of the black seems to have a drinking problem. This concept, you always have to have a drink in your hand, having fun, or you have to have a drink in your hand at a party, 
or you get to a social function is like, where's the alcohol? And then it's to the alcohol and the fact that if you go into the urban neighborhood, there's like a liquor store on every corner. Sometimes there's more than one liquor store just on the stretch of one block. But then on top of that, a lot of them are not also at that by drinking water, by drinking things that are healthy, by drinking, you know, nap juiced vegetables and things like that. Um, it's a lot of liquor and a lot of sugar, a lot, a lot of sugar. A lot of these beverages that are loaded with sugar have a lot of high fruit corn syrup. So I think I know more people who eat poorly, but sometimes eat healthy than I know of people who um, drink healthy. I think all of the people that I hear about, they always drink poorly. But I'm thinking for that reason, what we're drinking might be doing more. Yeah, I, I, I hear where that, you're coming um, from. I, I think it's think also, like, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, my dad. No, go ahead, Z, I'm listening. Go ahead, I'm listening. Go ahead. I think that too, drinking is one of those things that you can do mindlessly, uh -huh. right? Like. You know, because you're not chewing, there's less effort in it. And then, you know, a bottle of Snapple is actually two servings. They sell a lot of drinks in two servings. And people right. drink the whole thing. Like those cans of Arizona, especially uh -huh. oh, in Illinois, yeah. you can get those two for a dollar. Yeah. And, right. and it's like, so I think the availability of sugar kind of creates a own... Um, uh, 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 the environment where, yeah, I think we end up putting, a lot of people end up putting more harmful ingredients into their body. We haven't even gotten into colorings and preservatives and everything right. else where, you know, if you are, let's say, well, one, if you go into McDonald's on a regular basis and you're eating a breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you're getting that big-ass glass of soda that comes with it. Have you seen a large... Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. There are comments. I don't know when you want me to read them. Yeah, so how do you going to read some of the comments? Okay. Um, she, Nicole asked, did you take the vaccine shot? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, wow. wow. This is Nicole. We were talking about the body and the juice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's invasive. Nicole is all up in my business. Um, no, I haven't taken the shot. And then she As asked, yeah. oh. and then she asked, are you a good dancer and singer? You, oh, then she, then she just said, you missed my question above. Um, oh, can you pray for me, please? I'm in so much pain. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Sure. Yes, I will. Um, you know, you, you're welcome to share further. I don't know if. That's all one message. Though. Oh, that's all one yeah. message? Wow, I have to, um, okay, so answer. Singing and dancing, dancing, I love to dance. I have been told that I am a good dancer. Singing, eh. I sing lullabies to my children. I can hold a tune, but I would not categorize myself as a singer. What? No, I'm not. But yeah, that's all the comments. No, I'm not. <laughs> wow. Okay. We talked about drinking, Mo. We talked about drinking. <laughs> this is this is my version of putting my foot in it. Barefoot sweet red blend. <laughs> Barefoot. That's my foot. <laughs> Wait, did Munch show this whole time? Mommy's head was cut off? Or is this Well y'all been moving the camera, so Whoa, who's y'all? <laughs> get 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 this girl. Maybe it's because I was slouching a little bit, but I'm able to see her. But yeah, I her, can't um, tell if it's her camera. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not seeing. I'm, no, I just see. I don't see her hair anymore. I just see her her eyebrows. It's okay. Did don't you, mess it up. Did you not like razor? So. No, no, right. no. Turn this. Turn this side knob right. This yes. that and that the whole center stick part will raise. You can up loosen it and then raise it up and down. Oh no, I don't need it raised, I need it tilted. Oh, this, you'd have to turn this and tilt it back. Wait a minute. Production tilt crew is doing a great job. Hot, we can see the pot in the other camera. Oh, okay, there you yeah. go, that's it that's right there. Better. No, yeah. No, right that's there. good? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. Oops. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's because my hand slipped, so it went back down. <laughs> Let me know, well, so I might be moving in and out. So okay. I do with you. Oregano, add a little crushed pepper. We've just been talking, so I'm not been talking about the food, no, but y'all just here watching that. me cook. So yeah, I agree with you, Mo, um, regarding your perspectives and when it comes to the alcohol. It's just I think it also depends on you know, your social, um, your social surrounding, because a lot of people that I know in my age category, I don't necessarily see a lot of female black females drinking mm -hmm. um, okay. in my age category. I mean, of course, there may be many, but just the people I'm surrounded with. But I do okay. see um, in my age category, a lot of us are struggling with weight. Um, and that's why it leads me to say, um, you know, food. Um, okay. food. Food is a bigger is a bigger issue. But as you said, everything is leading. It comes back. I mean, psoriasis, psoriasis, the liver, liver particularly in the African American mm -hmm. um, community. I, I know right. that is an issue, but as far as um, um, pre-existing conditions, a lot of the issues that we have are weight-related. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I just feel like our our sugar consumption a lot uh, uh, accounts for a lot more of our weight than we really get credit for. I see a lot of women who feel like they're dieting and therefore they're not eating dessert. And I'm not going to have that ice cream and I'm not going to have a slice of cake and I shouldn't eat this and I shouldn't eat that. But then they're not thinking about the fact that they're still not drinking enough water and they're still having a soda with every meal or right. even like, OK, I know soda is bad and soda is loaded with sugar. So I'm going to have this juice. Sometimes the juice is loaded with the same amount of sugar as soda. So it's like, okay, we're not going to have ice cream or we're not going to have, but when you, when you look at, and even back to what Z was saying about the serving sizes and you say, okay, a bottle of Snapple is supposed to be servings. And therefore when you're looking at the nutritional value of things, it's telling you per serving, if there's 22 grams in one serving, then that means there's 44 grams in this whole bottle and you just downed the whole bottle. Yeah. And I agree. But if I pull out a serving of ice cream, how much, how much sugar is in that serving of ice cream? Well, most um, persons are not going to have a serving of ice cream either. There's an over, there's an issue with overeating in general in our community. That's and, true. Yeah. And even when you talk about like you know going back to your credit with the the drinks, the Starbucks oh. drinks, uh -huh. those drinks in themselves um, normally have um, half of the consumption just in a drink. But um, again, in my in my um, social circle, I don't see drinkers. Like I don't drink okay. juices. I am not into any type of you know. I drink water like Z. Um, I'm not, I don't drink alcohol. I don't have a high level of alcohol consumption, okay. but you can see a lot of sugars in processed foods. So, you right. know, when it comes to the chips or the dips or anything like that, all of that has a low oh, yeah. corner store food. Yeah. Okay. So to your credit, you were saying that there's a liquor store in every corner. Sis, there's three bodegas on that same block. Right? right, and in, that, mm -hmm. in those bodegas, you're gonna have all those little snacks and quick chips. Bunch rounds, right? Mm -hmm. and not to make mention of all those fast food restaurants on that same block where there's only one liquor store. There's, right, there's Popeyes and there's KFC, as well as there's um Taco Bell. Right, and one patron can go to all three of them. All right, whoa, 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 whoa. don't talk about my natural fries, Brenda. I'm just pointing out <laughs> still carbs, Gosh. still complex carbs. Still this salts, the high sodium, right. all, of those, all those things still compound to She's unnatural so synthetic foods that's going into your body. Okay. So I see, you know, if you look at, if you look at our community, we struggle with obesity. Obesity right. is a big issue. And I understand, yes, alcohol is, alcohol is prevalent. And I do know that, but in my, my mind, I'm thinking of drinks as chasers. It's not necessarily the, the main meal. When you sit okay. down in an African-American community and you have, let's say for us, a Jamaican meal, a Jamaican oh. meal going to have an eight ounce glass of stuff. Okay. But right. let's talk about the macaroni and cheese and cornbread. And we're going to talk about ackee and sausage and talk about the rice and peas all I want. And the fried plantain. And the fried plantain. Not to make much, the liquid because, the liquid because salad. Oh, but it's going to be down to salad dressing. Like that right. whole plate is, okay. you know, compared to the one cup of drink. That right. plate is four times as much. And we're finishing the plate. Right. And even what you described there is really a healthy meal compared to some of these other I know. Things. Right. Right. What, 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 what happened? She said what Brenda just described as far as Jamaican food is actually healthy compared to, you know. Compared to a lot of Oh, yeah, stuff. yeah. You know what's crazy? Something that I really realized is that the deeper you get into the ghetto, the mm -hmm. closer 
um, fast food places are. Right. Like, I more feel convenient. Like, more accessible. Yeah, like us living in East Orange on Walnut, the closest fast food place was like, what, Wendy's on Main Street, right? Mm -hmm. That was like a decent walk. You know what I'm saying? It was maybe like a 20-minute walk. Mm -hmm. Here in North, living on West End. Why don't you just tell everybody where McDonald's. you are? Tell everybody where you are. Why don't you just point out the house number? <laughs> Listen, we live in Hooterville. I'm not scared. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, and Popeye's are literally, uh, literally two blocks away from us. Right. Like we could walk there on yeah. some like five, ten minute walk. Right. And White Castle too. Oh, shit, yeah. And I'm like, yo, it's really crazy out here. No, it is. That's uh, that's a very good point because then I went, but the same right with the liquor stores. I so there was this y'all. I don't know if anybody remembers that time that you know someone that i had a relationship with left me in montclair and i walked home yeah <laughs> damn brenda <laughs> wait we need a last break hold on <laughs> that was completely under the bus don't hold on don't say names here don't say names don't say streets just give full descriptions <laughs> 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 night bye now peace for now all right bye nicole thank you for tuning in we're still going to be here for a while so um it's like the well the the bodies per what will you say per capita or per square foot per square foot well, then you you say that per square mile how many people are living in the area which is then why those businesses come to those areas because they're heavily populated so you know some people right that. so that leads to the next food related question are black people eating more trash because it's more readily available or is it more re readily available because black people are eating more trash the first the yeah. first i think it's a systematic yeah, I think it's a thing first. it's a systematic thing it's um the ones you talk about even to what the credence of what ziva said about um for mileage and convenience the, that that adds credence to the argument, but the truth is, I just think in uh, when you're considered an urban community, mm -hmm. there's going to be some conveniences that are that are almost automatic. The bodega, the corner stores, they're going to be there with the concept of density, the population density. Right. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think obviously the population density is is a huge factor, right? But I feel like this is an age-old discussion that maybe we'll never have the answer to because the problem, the problem started long, long ago and now it's just being perpetuated. And because yeah, we already as a society have a way of doing things, maybe we adopted this way of doing things because of systemic racism. Yep. But yep. now that it's <laughs> into us, it's yeah, like, he's coming okay. pause and look at my ricotta cheese though. Ooh, it's ricotta. I missed the whole ricotta thing. <laughs> Why are we Homemade laughing? Homemade ricotta cheese. 
Okay, because it makes it looks good. Uh, we're laughing because it doesn't. There's something wrong. No, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, how did you put it together? Since I missed it. Need salt? Uh, she put some citric acid in some milk and and, oh, and, and, and boiled it. it and cream. And what cream? Cream, yeah. yeah. And how does it taste? Is it nice and creamy? Is it perfect texture? I'm getting yes, a tofu it is. filling. Okay. It's delicious. All right, so now I know. Magnifique, c'est si bon. Anyway, so you were saying, um, Mo, you were saying? Oh, yes. No, so I was just saying, um, so now that it's been designed that way and it's been this way, you know, for so many decades and decades, why, um, how, how do we get out? So I think it's like one of those, like, which came first, the chicken and the, or the egg, right? It's that kind of argument. But now that the chicken is here, it's going to keep producing more eggs. Yeah, what came first was segregation, right? When they started putting the whole... What came first, the chicken or the egg? The segregation. The so the same situation I look at, we are, no, we are segregated today just by design, by zip code. Certain uh -huh. zip codes are going to have specific monikers of urban community. Right. And certain zip codes are not going to have those monikers. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Well, yeah. that now that can change, of course, because you know gentrification happens and the white flight happens. Yeah, that's funny. Move around. You're right. Uh, yeah, but, the Great Depression. The right, right after that. Right. But, but if, okay. Go ahead. So will 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 it always be? Even though the physical location changes, will the psychological location ever change? That's the thing, though, Mo. What happens with gentrification is that a certain community is then forced out so oh. it, so that community now takes on a different identity which would be considered suburban right which now has the mon monikers of suburbia right those the mindset of the people won't change because they're just going to move to another community right they'll move to virginia they'll move to georgia because at this point cost of living is more practical so now that community now mm -hmm. be considered you know will then go through its own process change so the people right. themselves are going to be uh, are going to mimic their society. You're able to sleep with so people if once, so yes, yeah, yeah. yes, if a community is gentrified, it doesn't mean the mindset of the people change. It means that the people no longer live there. Exactly. So the thing is, can we change the mindset of the people? Can we get black people to stop eating trash? Sure. As, many, as many black people are complaining, listen, the very same black people eating trash are the very same black people saying, this is all by design. This is systemic racism. You see, I'm saying everyone, everyone crying systemic racism is not me, you, and Aziza. Like they don't have our eating habits. Some of them are the people who are getting wasted every weekend. They are the people who feel like they can't party without having a glass in their hand. They are the people who are eating the Popeyes chicken sandwiches and having chicken sandwich challenges. But then they're also saying this is all by design systemic racism, the man trying to keep us down. So but, it's like, but, you feel that. They need to take responsibility. Okay, I, I, agree, I agree with what you're saying, but um, leading back to something that um, that Arish had said, you mm -hmm. know, off, 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 a little bit directed to another conversation, uh -huh. depression, right? So I do believe the idea of systemic racism is not just a specific space. It comes back from what makes us do the things and act the way we, we act. Okay. So systemically, we've been conditioned to do certain things. So if we are conditioned to um, to solve our problems by well, drinking, find me the to solve our problems by eating and not yeah. face and correct our problems, then the whole situation continues. Okay. I don't think that it's a space of, oh, there's only an isolated few that you are just drinking to, to have party. I okay. believe that there are still those people who are still dealing with the issues in their own way. I may not be dealing with my issues by drinking myself to oblivion, but okay. I may be eating the Popeye's chicken. I may be, you Here know, modifying my emotions okay. by thinking that I'm healthy and well and I'm overeating. Mm. I, don't think so that, I don't think that the mindset is a situation <laughs> of oh, exposure, just pure exposure. It is really, it's just, it comes back down to what your condition, how you manage and cope with issues. Okay. So, so as you can see, my age category, I have a lot of, like, what changes? Mm -hmm. Over time, experiences are going to change your behavior. So what I would have done probably 10 years ago, as far as my eating happens, habits are going to change now because I know how it's impacted my health. Okay. And now I'm going to start to change it, go backwards. So a lot of people, you'll notice, 
as you get older, you start making better choices. But right. when you're young, you're still going to, you know, experiment for lack of better words. So I don't think it's a, it's a case that we can push it all in one into one bucket. We're okay. just going through an experience. Yes. So, yeah, I do. Oh, go on. Oh, no, sorry, carry on. With you. Um, yeah, like I have seen on, um, like I guess black media sites mm -hmm. or like companies or whatever, or groups or pages or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there is a, there would, there will be a push, like a post here and there about becoming vegan or like eating better, eating healthier, or, you know, vegan versions of go vegan. Of usually, you know, a black person's favorite meal. Okay. Um, and so I guess I, I like, I do, I like, I, I feel like, you don't have to yell, you're right oh, that's true. Um, I feel like that as time goes past, like, I guess it'll start changing, especially like the difference between maybe like a few years before where I never saw any post, especially on the shade room about vegan recipes and stuff like that, you know, especially when it came to like black people, like literally a post of a black chef talking about, you know, whether he's selling a cookbook or whatever. Uh -huh. and like eating healthier i definitely didn't see any of that a couple years ago so i feel like it would maybe i guess it, it is changing to a certain degree i just feel like it might take a really long time okay <laughs> for us to like completely get out of it okay pause so i mixed in the ricotta cheese some parmesan some salt garlic um, mozzarella and now nutmeg. Did you make the parmesan yourself? <laughs> no, I've not gotten that far <laughs> in my cheese making journey. Okay, that's great. I am working on it. Though. Okay, are you going to make a vegetarian? I mean, a completely. So you're making one that's the the beyond one meat with the and turkey, the turkey and one with the pasta, but not a vegan one. I'm okay. not making a vegan. Well, not one a vegan one. one. No one without without a meat substitute. Yes. Okay. Although okay. I do want to take them. Okay. Yeah. Carry, carry on. Okay. So sticking with the topic of food, and actually, very same topic. What do you guys think about the cost factor? So, yes, we have the psychological factor and the fact that people have a psychological relationship with food, right? Or an emotional relationship with food. Yeah. Or their psychological state, their mental state, um, whichever you want to call it, affects the way they eat. How about the fact that a lot of moms or dads, um, a lot of, you know, people in the hood will argue that, well, this fast food is cheap and I need to feed my kids and it's expensive to eat healthy. It's expensive to go and buy everyone a salad from Panera Bread. It's cheaper to just get them some 99 cent nuggets. Nope. I've got five kids in my car. Nope. I think it's an excuse. Um, yeah, I think it's an excuse. It's too. a straight up excuse, especially when you're talking about if you're talking about um, parent, um, families in the community in in our community that gets benefits. The first thing, the first benefit that the the government affords is food. So oh. you're gonna get that option to spend that money how you feel what's feel what, what's best for your family. And I agree, there are times where convenience may may opt as an option, but it's not the only option. You know, I'm not going to drive past a supermarket to go to McDonald's to get chicken nuggets. Okay. When you can when you can go into a supermarket oh, yeah. with the benefits that benefits cart that you have and buy a whole chicken breast that's gonna cost half the cost of the whole meal. And you can go home and make it's an option. I think it's an option and there are excuses. So you can't go on and tell me that the stove is not working, the electricity is not working. There's just excuses. <laughs> I don't think it's costing. Okay. I mean yeah I, I agree with that a hundred percent but I've tried to explain that very point to people um, and they make it sound like, you know, I just sound crazy and they don't know, you know, like, nope. okay. Yeah, happy. I definitely, the first thing you get and the one thing you get most is, is yeah. food benefits. So, yeah. yeah. And I, yes. And I think even that, like I've always thought, wondered if even that contributed to obesity in low income communities, yeah. uh -huh. because while you I get agree. benefits, you're not getting any kind of nutrition training, okay. right? Yeah. Um, and and I think that that is important. So there's the nutri there's the aspects of it where it's like, well, 
you still have to make the right choices because we can talk about um, these options that are contributing to the bad health from fast foods, but they're also in the supermarkets. The cookie right. aisle, yep. and the Entenmann's. And the, yeah, all that stuff. The it's also in the supermarkets. And I, I, I was thinking that, well, you know, while I cook and bake, not everybody, clearly everybody doesn't do that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. Um, yeah, I agree with that 100%. And now, food benefits are being accepted, or SNAP benefits, whatever it is, are being accepted at so many more places now. I mean, including Amazon. Name. You can use them at Whole Foods. You can use them at the produce market. You know, you yeah. can use them at basically any produce market. Farmers markets. Right, right. farmers, farmers markets. markets now. Exactly. So it's like you can use, there's so many opportunities for you to be able to eat healthy, especially with this excess of money that otherwise, if you didn't have it, you know, you wouldn't be able to spend it in hundreds of dollars a month on food. So now that you have it to spend on food, why aren't you making healthier choices? And because they're what being given so much funding, they can't okay. use that whole food is expensive because now you can afford it. You can't trade your dough too expensive or the farmer's market is too expensive because now you can afford it. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of the reason, especially when it comes to like fast food and not wanting fresh food, mm -hmm. I feel like half of it is um habit, of course. Yeah. And then I think that the other half is more like time management. I feel like yeah, a lot idea. of poor people, yeah, like before, like, because obviously it's a... I, it, it is a very real misconception among a lot of people, both black and white, that um, fast food is cheaper than fresh food when that's just a lie. Uh, it, that's it's a lie. lie. Uh, so it's, more, it's more time. 74% of low income households are headed by a woman, and it's usually a single mom. It's often right. a single mom. So, yeah, time management is a huge issue. And I'm Look, I'm <laughs> mommy suffered from from time yes, management syndrome. Yes, I have. I have bought some, some quick stuff. Like, I, I mean, I have. I'm sorry. <laughs> when those griddles, those those McDonald's egg and cheese McGriddle can sell two for five, and, and Uriel is asking for a fully cooked meal. <laughs> Uh -huh. My Uriel goes, Mommy, it's the weekend. Where's uh, my on his way to school? I, I have stopped and picked him up. I still make sure I get him some apple spice. <laughs> <laughs> but often that's why, because yes, I do have the skills to do this, but there's a lot to do. <laughs> there's a lot to do in life. So, yeah, they're trying to find yeah. that balance. And that's really what it is finding the Bye. balance. Yeah, and I think I think people really just need to be taught time management. I mean, overall humans have bad time management. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, so I feel like what well, definitely when it comes to food, especially the poor, the poor black community, they really no need to income communities. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's especially though. Especially with the poor black community. Because listen. As a person who lives in the ghetto, Spanish people, they got their bodegas, okay? And a lot of them look down on black people. So we have that issue there. And that really but, kind of what's been but, Okay, so, th so I agree with you in super regards social. to bad super habits, buddy. What do you say? Adi, I, I think... I think I agree with you heavily when it comes down to habits. I think it's just the habits and conditioning yeah. that you're used to. If you're used to, you know, not having a breakfast and having a breakfast, you know, having a cone for breakfast and you're used to and was trained on having a fast food breakfast, that's going to be a common habit that's going to be hard to reteach. So there's a lot of people in our community that don't know their way around the kitchen because it wasn't taught in mm, exactly. the household. So their habits are going to be um, a reflection of their choices. Um, yeah. But, you know, going back down, even the cultural divide that you're, you're mentioning, Adish, the cultural divide of in the in the urban, the traditional black community, um, the the store owners are technically are, uh, are most most often not black. Owned. Um, yeah, they are going to be from a different culture and a different custom. So there are a lot of times there are fixed there are 
responding to a demand. They're not really creating the demand. Well, maybe Chinese restaurants did for a while, but they're not really creating the demand, but they're responding to it. So if, if their customers are saying they want high sugary drinks and they want, you know, a lot of fatty, fatty, fast, high preservative foods, that's what they're going to sell. Right. Yeah. Um, however, if the cust- if the customers come in and all of a sudden they want um, vegan options and all they want are going to be some healthy choices, then that's what the consumers are going to pr- produce. So that's why we see a big shift of what we see in the bodegas now, because some of them are coming up to, with, to compete with Whole Foods and the competition that now society sees through TikTok and Instagram. Now that our eyes are open to see other options. But I, I yeah. think that's the biggest challenge, um, overcoming the habits that we've been conditioned in our community to, to have. Yeah, especially when it's so many of us. It's like nobody really yeah. knows who to turn to, to on how to break it. Because yeah. everybody in the vicinity has the same exact habit. Exactly. So, yeah. I exactly. Think, I, I think it's also a lot of laziness, though. I think it's a lot, a lot of laziness. Because some people in our generation are not necessarily coming from parents who did not cook. A lot of people in our generation had parents that cooked and now they don't cook as much. I think a lot of it is laziness and poor time management. Well, so so I agree with you, but I can't be as generic. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would not agree with the general statement love. because uh-huh. coming up, and, okay, so I am a Gen X, right? And coming up, a lot of my classmates, when I was coming up in school, their parents did not cook. It was customary for a Jamaican household to definitely have our rice and peas and our chicken and something there. We had those things. But in my house, and like, you know, for cooking, our, culturally in the African American community, my friend who lived next door, her breakfast was very different from mine. And okay. it was because of custom, because they're not customarily used to getting up, breaking eggs, and doing those things. Her, her, her choices were different, but okay. it didn't make it. And in, our, in my case, yes, it didn't make it different in, from a health conscious point of view, because if they're having spam and grits and a lot of fried foods and I see no vegetable on the plate, like, you know, in my, in my house, we had callaloo and sausage, you know, so there was a rough yeah. even in the morning, right? Okay. So this, the plate arrangement was a little different. That's a lot of cultural influence. If you talk to those that are um, of, um, of, what do you call it? Of, um, what do you call, I don't want to use um, politically incorrect term. But someone that is from China or Korea, okay, say, right? Asian, right? Mm-hmm. I, I want to make sure they they're, they're they may be serving that food that we have by demand in our community, but that's not what they normally eat. You can see, oh, yeah. even through I've Instagram, been in Chinese places, right? And like for seen thing, behind you, the counter what they make for themselves. They make yeah, authentic very different. Chinese food okay. for themselves, right? It's not going to be deep fried. It's not going like they are going to always have a vegetable. In, like you can watch now, YouTube shows us that, Instagram yeah. and TikTok shows us that. That you know that what we are asking and demanding in our community, the consumers are providing. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's what they're consuming. Traditionally, okay. um, Asian Americans are very small frames. They're not normally obese, right? You know, you do have those anomalies, but even those that serve us, we can see a difference in their dietary consumption than what we're eating. Okay. Yeah, Japan alone. Okay. So I want to respond to what uh, Brenda was saying, and then I want to move on to another topic. But um, yeah, my statement, I was making a general statement. And while obviously, you know, based on your culture, you are eating different things, and it may be more healthy or less healthy, I still feel like by and large, more cooking was being done so you know brenda for your example you said they might have been eating spam and grits and you was eating ackee and saltfish and collards um and and boiled green but it still was being cooked it was still still being being cooked cooked. it wasn't that you was eating ackee saltfish boiled green banana and they were all getting mcdonald's mcgriddles every morning so essentially what they were eating Obviously, you know, it varies, but the fact that they were cooking, you see, I still feel like it goes back yeah. to a matter of laziness and poor time management. And we want, to I, I agree, obviously, so we can free up our time to be more productive in our day or more productive in our lives. But then we, well, you're really breaking up. Oh, no, yes, yeah, crazy. How about now? Yeah, you're better. Pro- you're better. Closer. 
Okay, maybe, maybe I'll just try and better. stand here. Um, but so it's like, okay, we want these things that are more convenient so that we save more time and have more time to focus on other things in li in our lives or be more productive throughout our days. However, we, we now have these conveniences, but are we utilizing that time properly? Are we saying, okay, we're not cooking our kids a home cooked breakfast. We're running them to McDonald's, not, not us obviously, but the people who are. We're running our kids to McDonald's to just buy the McDonald's breakfast and therefore using that extra time to do something productive. It's like we have all of these additional conveniences and our time management is still poor and our schedules are still a mess. You're right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And you know, just stick a pin on the McDonald's thing. For the first time in a very long time, I went to McDonald's yesterday. Yes, I did. To get fries. I don't know why. I didn't even finish uh -huh. them. But you know what I was surprised at? That one fry cost me five dollars when did fries become five dollars why did someone tell me <laughs> what not, size did definitely you get? not going back i just got a large, large fry he was like five yeah oh my I like, god if mommy get... says if you get the app they have a lot of deals where you can literally get a large fry Pretty for much. a dollar. Yeah, for like a dollar and stuff like that. So how about I just stop eating at McDonald's? And Z, I'm noticing a lot of glitches. <laughs> I'm off the for camera. that. <laughs> Z, there's glitches yes. with the camera. I'm noticing that you're speeding up and you're going fast at times. There's some glitches going on with the video. Really? Yeah. I've been Maybe, noticing. I don't know. Could it be the Wi-Fi? I hope not. My Wi-Fi is strong. How about now? You're fine now. I'm just letting you know there are times when you're like going in speed motion oh, and your times? mouth is moving. Okay. Yeah, I like think right, like right now, like right now. You just did that again. You did this whole, you know, really, really. Oh, it is kind of thing. breaky, like lagging. On the uh, on that camera. This one. The vis yeah. Oh. The visual is very good, but you know there are some glitches. Okay. Well, okay. I hope it works I itself out. Next. So where are you in your cooking now? What are you doing now? I'm about to I'm about to cook up the impossible burger. That's impossible. The impossible. Do you have to use oil with that? Or does it produce its own oil? Um, I mean I'm using some oil. He pen you probably you know, don't. Yeah, not probably not. Because that has so much fat in it. Right? Yeah, this is the thing with these alternative meats, they are they they aren't the healthiest. Yeah, they're yeah. in their own way. <laughs> They still per pound, it still has less fat than beef, its counterpart, but it's more fat than a ground turkey. Yeah. And how so much did that cost? And it has a lot of trans fat. Eat. Yeah, you know you want to eat. I'm gonna put a little olive oil in though. And how much how much did that cost? Actually it, it's a lot less now. I got it from ShopRite. It used to be $9.99 for what is it, 12 ounces. It's now to $6.99. Okay, and are, do you season it like like black folks, or we just throw it in the pan? I I season I season it like. Hold on a second. Mommy seasons it in her own little chefy way, yeah, but I you really don't need to okay. season it. It's very flavorful. Yeah, but I I do season it like it's um like I'm doing ground turkey or something. Yeah, her I her chefy way. Like okay. Yeah. But well, like I've, I've, I've gotten salt. used to the taste. Like you still, I still just taste. Salt. Yeah, it does need to be salted. Okay. But other than that, like if you just put salt in it and leave it like that, I've cooked that up and it literally just tastes like, you know, a bought burger or bought Impossible burger. Yeah. I can't. I don't know. I can't eat it. It's uh, every time I try, it just tastes too smoky. I don't like the flavor. Really? You have you've not had the Impossible like Whopper? I've had the um, Impossible Whopper, but the, but that's different because it, it already has that smoky expectation. But when I have it outside, no. Did I have the Impossible Whopper? Yeah, I think I did. But that's different because it has that smoky flavor already. But when I have yeah. it on its own, like the one time that's that it has. It does Sorry. take on, like even from the grill, the whole the front flame boils, that thing. Yeah, I think that's on purpose. Yeah, it takes that on very well. Yeah, I like it. Uh, just to go back no. a little bit to the whole fast food thing, I do think if someone who has been put in the position where I had to get something quick, um, 
knowing which items to order. You know, unfortunately, like McDonald's took all their salads off their menu. But when I get the Impossible Whopper from Burger King, if I get it for Uriel, I don't often get him the soda. Well, he's not allowed to drink soda during the day, so I will let him have soda if I get him a meal like that. But I double all of the vegetables. So I get extra tomatoes, extra lettuce, extra pickles, um, onions. pickles and onions. So he's basically eating a salad. <laughs> Yeah, but, okay. Yeah, but, finish your thought, my dear. No, that was it. That was it, yeah, but, but it's, it's, still, it's still a burger. Yeah. I mean, adding more calories to it. I mean, it um, is. You know, it um, is, but, yeah. you know, sometimes but I can, it's I, kind of, I get hurt. <laughs> yeah. I I can, it's, it's a, it's it's a so mindset bad. thing. <laughs> All right, guys. So last topic um, and touching on what Brando was saying about uh, demands. So when you go into the hood supermarket, it's different than the suburban supermarket. Um, the way things are displayed is different. A lot of the Debbie cakes are more often on sale. A lot of the cheaper Debbie cake brands such as Hostess, rather than let's say Entenmann's or something like that, or rather than Pepperidge Farm, you'll see more Hostess and Entenmann's on sale. The produce aisle in suburban supermarkets is typically more robust. A lot of them have these village supermarkets where half of the store is a produce and fresh meat and death department. Um, you find more collard greens on sale in the hood supermarkets and it costs more more money to purchase collard greens typically in a suburban supermarket. A lot of different healthy options as far as the brands are concerned with regard to whole grain bread and things like that are more readily available in suburban supermarkets. And we're not saying a half mark versus all being in the ghetto versus a Whole Foods in the suburbs. We're saying a shop right in the hood versus a shop right in the suburbs. For instance, um, East shop right, East shop right. <laughs> For instance, East Orange shop right versus West Orange shop right. Right? You guys shop, you know, you've shopped at both, so you know the differences there. Yeah. So, are we as people in the hood, or our hood people, our black people, um, are, oh no, sorry, are the supermarkets? responding to a demand or creating the demand in the game. I think they're cre I I think they're creating. I mean, okay, so I think they're I um, I feel like that a long time ago, like when all this like this this ideal of like how they wanted segregation to be or blacks and whites to live, I definitely think that was implemented purposefully okay and then um you know black people obviously you know learned what they like mm -hmm. through what was available for us and so now they listen to the demand like i would say now they listen to the demand but they listen to a demand that was technically originally they created okay so now, yeah. they're, they're, now they're responding to a demand that they created in the first place. Yeah. Okay. Um, Brenda left. Maybe her phone died. Yeah, probably. Because she didn't, because I don't think I heard it. Okay, you guys, Mo, you guys have to repeat the question for me. Um, in, in hoods, urban market, hood market, even that supermarket came for stock price or Asmar or Acme. Are these supermarket corporations creating the demand in the hood or responding to the demand in the hood? Um, I don't know. That's hard to tell. I think that they're creating it. I think mm -hmm. that they're, they're per perpetuating it. Because the thing is that the higher up, of course, all these places have buyers, right? People that stock 
their stores or what they have available based on if they think it will sell or not. Right. And and that can even go as far as the people, the um, the food companies. Okay. Because in certain places, they have to they have to rent shelf space. Like they have to pay extra to have their food at eye level on the shelf. And so they're going to decide as well. Well, you know, are these people going to buy this food? Right? Is it worth us paying the money to have it in there? Now, I'm not saying that all food that's in the supermarket are paying to have it there, but they are. There is extra fees if you want it in a certain place. If you want it on the end caps or you want it at okay. a high level or or um, near the, what they call it? The cash register. Um, okay. Then you pay extra. So... I think there's a lot of discrimination, a lot of prejudices that are going on because some of these companies have decided that, well, these black people or these Latino people are not going to buy these foods because they're not interested because this is the kind of food that they like or they don't care about their health or... So I feel like it's just a vicious cycle. Okay. I feel like it's a vicious cycle and we are at the point now as a community where... We're, we're so used to things a certain way uh-huh. and maybe just aren't. I don't think, I think a lot of people aren't willing to change. Like what we were saying earlier with the sugary drinks and all that stuff. Mm. They're not, they're not, they're stuck in their ways. That's how they want to eat. That's what they're used. To. I still see chitlins. <laughs> chitlins. Chitlins. Uh. Chitterlings. And I'm like, people still eat these? Yes. Yeah. I have seen yeah. them sold out, and I have seen them restocked. So yeah. people are still buying chitterlings. But you go to Whole Foods in West Orange, they don't have no chitlins. Out there. They don't have no organic chitlins or brass fed chitlins. Or right. They don't have it. They, they just don't have it. Mommy, this camera went out. It did? It, I wonder if it went dead. Oh, maybe. I hope not. Wait, but Brenda came back. My phone? Oh, she did, yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to do some testing. Okay, so you think that they are, so you think they're perpetuating the demand? Yes, I I think at this point it's like a cycle. Okay. But at the same time, consumers are contributing to that perpetuation. I think a lot of the perpetuation perpetuation has to do with um, racism, you know, prejudices. But to a certain degree, like a stereotype. I feel like it's it's very similar to a stereotype. Like, a stereotype comes from somewhere. Okay. There's some kind of truth to it. So, at this point, yeah, it's a vicious cycle. Now, if you want to look at, well, how do we stop it? Mm-hmm. I think then that would go to... Hold on. Mm. Damn. That would go towards the um, the suppliers, the supermarkets, to then change what okay. their offerings are. And I think people would kind of get on board, especially in this climate. I think people are becoming more health conscious. So okay. this is what I want to know, check, right? Let me check this. Mm-hmm. So, and this is where it's confusing, because I feel like, obviously, there has just been... Like, the white man, like, he made one hell of a plan. You know what I'm saying? Not the white man. Not the whole white man. Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Already? Yeah. Well, yeah. He made one hell of, hell of a plan. And, oh, you Where's know, the they they did a whole lot I to obviously brainwash slaves and black people. And, obviously, it, they're still doing a lot, which is why... There is even a such thing as systemic racism. And so I just feel like definitely when it comes to supermarkets, right? Because when you think about that, what's his name? That massacre, right? The, the Black Wall Street massacre, right? The whole thing was that, you know, black people were free from slavery, but then white people turned around and said, y'all may be free, but... You can't shop at our supermarkets. You can't go to our schools. You can't 
you know, buy clothes from our stores. And so black people said, well, then I guess we're going to have to make our own community, right? Right. So with that community being made, then obviously we were taking the, we we were taking from each other. So we were controlling technically what what was going in our mouths. You know what I'm saying? The uh -huh. the, the 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 supermarkets we walked in were black owned. Uh huh. And so I know like after the massacre, obviously it scared a lot of people. It scared a lot of black people, especially since you know, these white people could just turn around and say we were crim criminals and uh, every every black owned store on Black Wall Street just gets burned down and then nothing happens for anybody. You know what I'm saying? And then black people just suffer. And then of course that instills its own level of fear. But then it makes me wonder then, at what point then, then did shop right integrate itself you know what i'm saying like because if everything was black owned mm -hmm. and then white people instilled fear because they didn't because obviously black people were thriving after slavery mm -hmm. then it's like it, that's what makes me more think that then maybe the food was on purpose you know what i'm saying like maybe because then obviously at some point white owned businesses had to come in and serve the black community because they clearly wasn't letting black home businesses serve the black community. Okay. But then you so, got to, that wasn't all over the country, right? So a lot of times, like there's a lot of um, black people, obviously who fought for integration and there are some people, some black people, there are a lot of black people who fought for integration and there are some black people who was against integration mm -hmm. and they felt like we should have our own thing. We should keep our own thing mixed with the white man devil you see what i'm saying and yeah. things like um, not the, the white man devil the mississippi they weren't even by the bus boycotts right we responded by saying oh, you're breaking up oh man yeah i can't hear you Am I breaking up now? Okay, better. So even they said, you know, with the bus boycotts, all right, we're going to boycott you guys. We're going to create our own bus system. And we're not going to give you any more around money if we're going to, if you're going to continue to treat us like this. And that's why they ultimately wound up changing the laws, just so they could get our money. But a lot of blacks felt like, well, why, why are we trying to quote unquote, earn the right to hang out with a bunch of people who hate us? So people who are against integration, it's not because they are white supremacists and don't feel like we're good enough to be around these white people. It's because, well, why have we decided that they're the golden standard? Why do we need acceptance from them? Why aren't they fighting to receive acceptance from us? And a lot of that did hurt black business. Our need to be integrated. So I think going back to the, I mean, the supermarket thing, I, I do think that a lot of it was, um, and I agree Aish, with your initial point that, you know, maybe it was initially creating a demand and now, now meeting a demand. Yeah. And, um, and that's why, you know, they're not selling black people collard greens. Collard greens aren't cheaper in the hood supermarket because they, collard greens are toxic and they want to kill us all with these evil collard greens. It's because they know that's what black people want to eat. But then even when it comes to certain cheap foods, I mean, when we wanted to buy ramen noodles living in East Orange, you couldn't find the vegetable ramen noodles in the East Orange ShopRite. We had to go to West Orange ShopRite just to get the vegetable ramen noodles. Like a lot, actually, a lot of it actually, by choice. What's the matter? Oh, Gazelle Blue said hi, Aziva. Hi, Gazelle. Um, you could get it from Tropical. That's right. the thing. There was a lot. Of, there's a lot of like some of the West Indian. I mean, those are oftentimes these West Indian supermarkets are owned by Koreans or right. Asian people. Oh, okay. So yes, yeah, so you could get the ramen, <laughs> the <laughs> veg vegetarian ramen from them. Right. That's and where I, I ended up getting it from. I didn't even find it. So was that was that the case ten years ago? Or is that more recent? 
I feel um, like 10 years ago, there was nowhere to get it besides suburban supermarkets. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I just know I, I came across it. It wasn't like I was looking for it. Okay. So. I mean, I haven't looked at a fort, you know, in maybe 10 years. But back when I was looking for it, it wasn't, you couldn't find it. You could find the beef one. You could find loads of the beef ramen. Okay. You could find the chicken ramen. But you just could not find the veg, you know, the vegetable ramen. And right. I went to West Orange ShopRite. I, I missed the entire experience of watching that meat cook because I couldn't see it on camera. So I don't even know what it looks like. How long? I'm trying to get the thing charged. I mean, I, I should always oh, I know, yeah. cut mommy's head off a little bit. Yeah, I should show the meat because I didn't see it. Okay. It's All right, guys. Separate. Well, I have a movie date with my daughter, so I'm going to go. All right, Mo. Thank you for joining. Sure, I will be over here. Yeah. Shit. Um, What'd she say? She'll be over here tomorrow, you bet? <laughs> I said later on, or tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> I said I'll be over there to get my plate. Oh, uh, okay. oh, I need to log back in. Wait, when are you making the dessert? You're doing that on camera as well? Yeah, she's doing it as soon as she puts the lasagna in the, the oven. oven. Yeah. Oh, oh, man, I'm going to miss that. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Or I'll see you All later. Right. All right. Bye. 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 Yeah, I'm not a conversationalist. I just watch. What? I'm not a conversationalist. I just watch. I just watch. Um, I, um, I'm a little, yeah, the fact that this is off, because I definitely wanted to roll out. When I rolled out, have that playing. Oh, how does it, what's the texture of the dough like? Is it still resting? Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's ready to roll out, but okay. we get some charge on that. Hopefully, it'll charge fast. And and then go ahead and put it back up and roll it out. What pan so, are you using? I'm going to do the turkey of, now. What kind of pan are you using? This pan, oh, shoot, I, I should have used my forever pan. This pan is actually, um, it's very similar. You've seen the Forever Pans, right, on Instagram? No, Have I don't you? go on Instagram to look for, um, you know, pans. Okay, well, it's, it's an ad that plays quite often. No, and it's only on your feed because you do cooking. My feed has crap. You want to see oh, what, what okay. Instagram <laughs> tells me? Instagram talks to me in a different language. Okay, well, so it's this popular cult thing on Instagram and I found this on what they call it Amazon I found this kind on Amazon so it has like that whole kind of ceramic feel but it can go on an induction cooktop because it has a, a, a layer or the back of it is made from steel because you need you know that conduction from metal so so what material is that? Is that like a cast iron? It looks quite heavy. It looks like cast iron, but it's one of those ceramic coated. Okay. Ceramic coated. So I don't know. I don't know if it's aluminum, like the other part, but then it's coated in ceramic. Okay. Don't ask me how they do that, but they do it. And that's what that is. Can you even see, can you see this in this at all? I do see the pan now. I'm seeing the pan. I'm seeing everything. Oh, okay. Just not seeing it from the vantage point of above, but I'm seeing it. Yeah. Any more questions on there? No? No. The only one person watching. One person watching? I wonder... Does, does Brenda being a part of it count as a person watching? No, it doesn't. Oh, okay. I think well, I want to go to I guess that might, that's probably Giselle who said hi. For tuning in. So, so far we have the, oh, ricotta, oh, the ricotta cheese made and mixed up with seasonings and eggs and mozzarella. And we got the Impossible Burger done, the Impossible Meat done, and now I'm going to do the turkey. Where is the turkey? 
So you make, did you make your own mozzarella too? No, I didn't. I'm not that. She cheated, Brenda. <laughs> I'm just checking, you know? No, I did not make my own mozzarella. We That would have to be a couple of days. A, a, a lot of days. <laughs> a, a couple of weeks. She, what? Why? Mozzarella? I mean, I guess I can press mozzarella, right? Mm. I've not learned how to do it yet. Let's just put it that way. Okay, because I saw something. I don't think it's as complicated as we think. Yeah, I know how to do it. Like, I don't know as far as the ingredients, like the exact measurements of ingredients, but I do know how to make it as far as like the actions. Because I've just seen okay. a lot of videos. I told you I back to back of literally Italians making mozzarella. Mozzarella, yeah. It, it seems like very mozzarella. simple ingredients. And the yeah. process itself also is quite simple. Not simple, but it's not as, as exaggerated as I'm thinking in my head. Yeah, I know they curdle it the same way, like how mommy did the ricotta cheese. Uh -huh. And then they put it in like this hot water to then melt the curdles back down. And then okay. they just kind of like massage it until it starts getting stretchy and like mozzarella looking. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I remember. And then and they pulling, create balls there's and some put pulling it in to it. Water. Yeah, so maybe that's her next project. She should make mozzarella cheese. Yeah. I can't hear anything because it's sizzling, so. Maybe that's your next. No, you're, she, she's really straight nice. up heard that. She's just trying to ignore it. The mozzarella, what'd you say? Mm -hmm. What'd you say, Brenda? She's straight up heard. She's just trying to ignore. <laughs> she said you heard. You're just trying to ignore. Wow. No, I didn't. No, yeah, this sizzling is really loud. I don't know why I keep putting the onion sauce away, but it's like one of my number one in Seasoning ingredients. Onion and garlic, those are my two people. Onion and garlic is like the mother of all food. Yeah. Fresh <laughs> as well as brown. So much so, Grandma just calls it seasoning. <laughs> yeah, I call it seasoning. My, um, I, um, yesterday I happened to get kalalu as well as fresh kalalu and pepper from one. I can see lox. The locks are blinding your entire view. Oh, sorry. There you go. All I saw were golden locks. It's because the sizzling is so loud, I can barely hear you, so I have my ear to the phone to try and hear okay. what you're saying. Let me turn off. Okay. I thought Uriel was doing this cooking with you. Uriel's not asleep. Yeah, Uriel's knocked out. But his stinky. I thought, he was, I thought it was with him. Oh, this is confusing. Wasn't it supposed to be you and your son? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. And my show too. But you know, my wow. daughter was gonna her her involvement in the parts that you know, it's not her. That it was food that she can't eat. What is I know, it? Not, not very enthusiastic. I've been carrying Where's this it? live on my back. Huh? <laughs> I said I've been carrying this live on my back. <laughs> I see this. What about um <laughs> So which, what is the PK? What's the PKU? What is the um her her? What is her version? What is she having? What is Michelle having? I am making her. Christian, what Christian? Uh, he, how can he tell me there was between the Impossible Burger cooking and the turkey <laughs> cooking? He, I have. She has some low protein pasta that I am going to cook up some mushrooms, some some. Oyster mushrooms and shiitake mushrooms and stuff to go with with the sauce, with the tomato sauce, okay. and and her daya, her vegan cheese. You know what's the craze these days? The the lion's mushrooms. Because you know what the craze? The lion's mushrooms. Oh yeah. I never lion's had it, but beard. it looks good. It's called lion's it's beard. You said. Probably from that vegan TikToker, he mm -hmm. did some deep fried lion's beard mushrooms mm -hmm. and made a, like a, a copycat Popeye's chicken sandwich with it. Okay. Is it good? And I think that that is what kind of brought it into. I've done lion's beard. Okay. It's not um. All that. Yeah, I was disappointed with the flavor. 
I really I, I stick to my portobello. There's just something about portobello and the, the meatiness of it. I enjoy portobello. Simple. Portobello? Yeah. I want to taste chicken of the woods to see if it really that sounds more. That doesn't sound taste? right. Yeah, it's supposed to be some kind of. Well, some people call it a mushroom. Some people call it a fungus. Okay. Um, but it's supposed to. Mushrooms are funguses. I mean, yeah, but you know, people like different names. But it's supposed to be. It's supposed to. The reason why it's called chicken of the woods is because it's it's supposed to taste like chicken, and it has the okay. same texture apparently too. But where chicken can you get that? Vegan. It's a fungus. Oh. Uh, you can get it from Whole Foods. Why don't you try it next time? I want to see you try it. Yeah, I, I tried looking for it, but the only ones I could find was, like, making your own. Like, the little plugs that you put in, like, I guess, trees or however fungus usually grows. That's, that's, that sounds challenging. Yeah. I couldn't find any, like, fresh, you know, cell or anything. So I'm like, oh, I guess I'm going to have to make my own in order to eat it. So I think, I think vegan options are just more readily accessible in all communities now. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they're, they're healthier at all. I pop that. Yeah. I be down. Oh, and now yeah. you're done with everything. What? So now you're done with everything. The next thing is the pasta, right? I'm about to roll out the pasta. I'm waiting for the other thing to charge. But okay. I just added the tomato sauce to the turkey. So I okay. can get that layered in, in the oven. Sure. And then do the veggie one. Krishna is up. Uh, Krishna, you. Yeah, Krishna, I'm you can shut up now. Like you ain't getting none. Get All right. Uh -huh. I'm going to jump off. I'm going to go have, um, make my dinner. And I'll be back. All right. Thank uh, you for joining us. No problem. I'll come watch it. Bye, on, Brenda. Um, Facebook. Bye, later. Bye, ladies. We'll be later. here. All right. Bye. Okay. Is it the onion salt that's weak? Probably. All right, everyone, I want to thank Brenda and Mo for being a part of the cooking and conversations. So now we have this done. I'm going to get my other food camera up so y'all can see. And we are going to roll out the pasta. Tomato sauce everywhere. Krishna is up. Wow, well, I'm kind of sad, but I just respond to that. What? Um, no, I saw this comment on one of my videos, and I and the comment is "You're amazing inside and out," and then I see that I liked it. But then she wrote another comment under her comment, which I didn't see. Oh. Uh, she says, I'm amazed at the amount of strength you and your family have. You are so pretty and strong like your mom. If you guys ever come to Syracuse, Syracuse, Syracuse. New York area, I'd love to see you guys speak or just anything else. I cried for you guys, then laughed at other videos. But you, girl... You have a pretty, pretty voice. You've got a talent. I can't wait to see what you do with your voice. Aww. That's so sweet. <laughs> and you bitches is still... I don't like the fact that I have to watch a commercial just to play my own video. And I'm not getting paid. It was one of your singing videos? Yeah. How long have we been streaming for? Um, two hours. Two and a half hours. Yeah. Yeah. 20, 20 minutes and 15 minutes. I'm telling you, Mommy, I told you, Jack. How long do you think it'll be? Um, three and a half to four. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because you still got to make peach cobbler, right? <laughs> you really are pleading. You pleading? I did save a little turkey for you. I, I saved a little turkey for you. You want it? What is reaching up to me going to do? Okay. Come on. We give Christian a little turkey. A little snack. Oh my gosh! It's it's wow. He said, "Mommy, you know the <laughs> Okay, I think that's a charge enough. So we're going to get our overhead camera back. Let me think. I want to roll out thing because even if we lose it, what the okay, let me just put it in. There we go. Here, we're gonna get the overhead camera back and um. <laughs> more. Is it in? Okay, let's see if we can like did the other screen pop up? Guess. Oh, food, yeah. Okay, I just added it. So now, your face. So you're in the show. Everyone can see and hear you. You already added it in? Yeah. What up? How is that, Ms. Vine? Yeah, I mean, how much of the table are you trying to get? Oh, I'm just trying to put it back in the water. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay, that's all you get. You're so cute. I can't I stand it. Like, like how are you a grown cat and your kids still so cute? Okay. Can I get paper towels, please? Uh, you I'm bought paper towels? Yeah. I'm going yeah. to. I thought that would take you. Oh, so you know where they are? Now, when you are doing pasta like this, I'm looking up here. When you're doing pasta, um, fresh pasta that you're cooking directly in the sauce, the sauce really needs to have a little more water than normal. So I'm going to add some more water to this. Thank you very much. I'll add a little more. I need a spoon that did not touch meat. What I'm plugged. So we lost Uriel to the fight. He's knocked out. Got to save some sauce for the other one and for Marcia.
cute. I can't is. stand how cute you are, Krista. <laughs> I can't. I know people are like, what's quick? Bring him over here. Oh, well, you want me to hold them in the... Uh, yeah, just come. Can you? Without knocking over. <laughs> this is Krishna, everyone. Krishna. I'm going to keep him away from the food. But, yeah, that's Krishna. That's who you be hearing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I already gave you a taste. You can eat what everyone else eats. No, you cannot eat now because you know when they get the food, when I give you all this food, you're gonna want food and then you're gonna eat too much. No, no, you had a taste, that's enough. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh, well, damn, I just put. He said, I don't care, I'm still here. All right, let's roll out this pasta. Look, you so really need to take out his anger. I swear to God, if anybody, if anyone, anybody in this family had a coping mechanism, <laughs> I know, right? It's the cat. <laughs> and use only like two sheets per layer. This wire. You're still yelling at me. Oh wow, more people just went on. You got five watchers now. Hello everyone, if you're just joining, we are at the stage now in our pasta baking where we're rolling out the pasta to go into the um into the pan oh you, you know, know how to i get the just the thinness or whatever yeah. after you put it in once you um i usually do it a couple more times and the same thinness Now, because of the way this pan is, I'm going to go ahead and cut this because I'm going to lay it out like a sheet, not just a stretch. So you're supposed to be watching this. Gambia, Good Life Africa said, what's up? Miss the beginning. Yes, you missed the beginning, but it will be available for you to watch later. So just to catch you up, if you're just getting here, we are making lasagna. Fresh. This fresh pasta. I'm going to lay that just like so. I made the cheese. I made the cheese from scratch. Well, I made the ricotta cheese from scratch. That's what this is. Made the pasta from scratch for the lasagna. So I'm uh, just rolling out thin now. I'm, I don't want this too thin. Uh, get involved with your skin school. Um, that's what I'm getting. No, you're on banners, Michelle. Oh, she said wonderful. Okay. I thought I clicked on comments. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> but then, you could have just checked. This what is, is going to smell uh -huh. like crazy. I'm going to puzzle this together because of the shape of this pan, too. So I'm just going to do that. Start with a new piece. Go back. Hmm. Is there a food song? Not that I can really think of. <laughs> I just saying two. that. Can you can't. What? <laughs> I know. I just thought of one, but it's uh, it's make a wish. <laughs> I have two guests, two guests on, mom, single moms, and. When you do watch the replay, 
they talked about or we spoke about, I was cooking more. <laughs> they, they had the floor with the talking. But I talked a lot about the food availability to low income communities and if it contributes or lack thereof of healthy options, if it contributes to obesity. And where is why is that the case? Who is the source of it? How do you change it? So on and so forth. So, you know, good conversation. Good conversation. Though I was um, cooking mostly. Then we shall take some of our ricotta. Have you ever thought of making a restaurant out of the kitchen? What do you mean? Well, a lot of people made restaurants out of the kitchen during the pandemic. <laughs> Yeah, they probably avoided a lot of, um, they probably avoided a lot of, what's he running around about? I don't know, he on crack. You know, they didn't get licensing and stuff. Because the thing is, so in New York, New York, you cannot have a home kitchen. You okay, pass. that's where it was, it was in New York. Really? You, you wouldn't, yeah. they don't approve home kitchen, so they must have did it illegally. I guess. Yeah, it was on one of those pages like BuzzFeed or Vice or Insider. Okay. That kind of just change. talk about whatever whatever thing that's like popular or whatever. Right. And it was about this woman who lives in a brownstone in New York and she makes pizza. And it's literally just her and her kitchen. And she has things in like containers on the floor. She talks about what red flower she uses blah 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 to make she has some wow. little one of those electrical like those plug-in pizza oven things okay. that mimics like a real pizza or whatever and she's explaining she says sometimes she gives it away for free she just gives pizza to people who's in need she talks about she used to be pretty much something that was completely the opposite of a pizza maker okay but then i guess she realized she didn't want to do what she was doing. And so she started learning under pizza places. Like she would just go into like pizzerias and ask them to teach her how to make pizza. Wow. And through that, she feels like she made the perfect pizza. And then the pandemic hit. So that's when she decided to just make pizza out around. And they filmed it and all. So I'm like, I thought you couldn't do home kitchen. Yeah, because I'm going to tell you a story. So, um, while I was in between homes at one point, that's happened a little too often, more than I like it to, but you know, it is what it is. I, while I was catering, I was baking cakes for companies in New York, and I had the opportunity of being interviewed by the New York Times food critic, critic Florence Fabrican. I was able, she was recommended to me by an associate. Um, he ordered two cakes, two of my cakes, because he loved my cakes so much. He ordered two of my cakes and told me to give it to Florence Fabrican and, you know, see what she says. So I made her my Eclipse, chocolate Eclipse cake which is a chocolate fudge cake layered with vanilla custard frosting and fudge frosting and ganache. And I also made her red velvet cake. Which I'll keep cooking while I'm talking. So, how can I do this? Pictures. She loved it. She loved it. She had nothing but compliments, good things to say. I was so just proud of myself, shots, like all of, everything that you could possibly say. I'm just piecing this, guys. So she says, so where are you located? I says, oh, I'm located in New Jersey. Really, what's the restaurant address? Because I'm going to do a write-up in the New York Times about your food. And she said that as soon as it posts, I will get over 500 orders. I says, well, um, Florence, I cook out of my home. She said, what? She says, so I said, well, I mean, for big projects, I do rent a kitchen, a professional kitchen. She's like, that's not gonna work. 
I, well, I don't know what to tell you. I, I cook out of my home. I take orders. And she says, because in New York, you have to have a food license and you cannot cook out of your home. But in Jersey, you can. So that's what I was working under. Depend, as long as you are not making a certain amount of food or selling it in a certain way, there are still other restrictions. Okay, I'm gonna put more sauce on. Um, why though? Like food safety issues. Uh, you have to have certain insurance in case somebody gets care. sick. Like there's a, a bunch of things. People's and, homes are nasty. And like yeah, that. exactly. The, the health day. department has to come and inspect, and, like all this stuff. Where in New Jersey they'll do that. They they'll do that in New Jersey, but apparently at the time in New York they didn't. So I am a little surprised to hear about this person who was in New York and was featured on BuzzFeed. And that's BuzzFeed just like, you know, ignored stuff. Yeah, but so I've seen a lot of videos, like, because of the pandemic. There was also um, a freaking uh, an airplane pilot. He says he lost his job because of the pandemic, and so he decided to cook out his house. Yeah. And now he, you know, he technically runs a business out of his house because it got popular. Same thing that happened with this Spanish family. They lost their job. So, I mean, they actually had a home that had a had a, um, a yard in it, a front yard. So that's where they set up three big, long tables, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Their little... Um, they they had a grill because they made they made tacos. Okay. So they set up three long tables. Their grill. They pre-made all their salsas, guacamole. Everything was homemade, and they just wake up every morning and set that up. And that's what I didn't get. There was nothing that really secured the handle. It was just like you stick it in. Yeah, that's usually what it is. When they get the front, they try to make it. Yeah. So I know the Spanish, the Spanish family was in L.A. I don't okay. remember where the pilot was. Okay. I just remember him saying that he lost his job as a pilot and there was nothing, you know, there was nothing else he could do. He knew how to cook, so yeah, he started it's... selling, I think, I think he was like Filipino or something. So whatever, like, his culture is food. Okay. He started so selling out his kitchen. kitchen. And you know what? That makes sense with how that got popular because a lot of the mom and pop type restaurants which would be the cultural restaurants you know the pizzerias and yeah the the latin places mexican shops those places were the ones that's cold closing down and wasn't open during the pandemic those are the ones that was losing uh, their leases yeah. because in here i mean in in locally here in essex county a lot of the jamaican restaurants closed you know, yeah. a lot of them closed. So, okay, as y'all can see, I'm just puzzling this stuff, which is kind of what I like about making lasagna from fresh pasta, fresh pasta. You can literally just puzzle it together. So I'm really stretching this, the rest of this, because I don't think I have enough noodles. Yeah, to make two, right? It's gonna have to be. That's why I'm stretching it. To make more. Here we are, we and sauce, me and cheese. <laughs> well, with this, I'm going to, so I'm gonna do this, and instead of Closing up, finishing this with another layer of, of pasta. It's three layers of pasta, but I would want to make it four normally. But I don't, yeah, I don't have enough for both of them. Gambia, oh no, the Prosperity said, hello, Aziva, we love you. Hi, the Prosperity, thank you, love you too. And Gambia Good Life Africa says, wow, good thing many of us learned to cook from an early age. Yeah. I definitely did learn to cook from a very early age out of necessity. And that's something, like, 
do you think that if it wasn't necessary, like for my girls, they have a mom who cooks. Do y'all still, they still learn how to cook. I mean, show because of her diet. Listen, diet. I'm a five star chef. I'm a professional <laughs> out in the streets. I taught mother this. Wow. <laughs> I don't remember ever tasting your cooking. <laughs> <laughs> My show got the marble crown. You're talking to you. Me? Yeah. <laughs> She's talking to you. I don't cook for you, okay? <laughs> you could. And plus, tell me some more lies. Because I was definitely your oh, personal yeah. chef. Right. Exactly. Right. Shut these people up. <laughs> they don't understand. understand. They don't understand. Bitch was baking cakes at 13. Yep, and that's the thing because they saw their mama doing it. I'm gonna cook by my own right. Yeah, you are. You were shuffling it up the other day with your arm. What's what is it? I just only do it for myself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and show knows nothing about the cooking for other people life. And she will fight you if you want to taste her food. Boy, you make that's it. why you just eat her food when it's in the fridge. She was doing Wait, what? Wait, what? Nothing. What was it? Jackfruit. She was doing stuff with jackfruit. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm a professional chef, so. It's hard when it look. Other people's food I don't need to eat, other than my mother's. But that's only said for respect. <laughs> you like Asian food. The Korean chicken wings and... I don't think I'm mommy. Not all the time, though. Those things aren't like all the time. Wait, what are you talking about? You said the only food you eat is yours, which you cook. Oh. Right? With mine. Well, no. Wait, did I say that? I thought that's what you said. Did I misunderstand? What'd she say, y'all? I don't know. I felt like I said something around that, but maybe worded slightly different, so I understood as something else. Oh. So it wasn't your intention yeah. to say that? Who knows? Wow. Okay. So um, we got three layers of pasta here. I'm just going to go right on top of this with the sauce. The rest of the we sauce. We got enough to give away. <laughs> Are you eating yeah. this? <laughs> Well, we got enough. Ain't no family in this house. <laughs> Ain't no family for the people in this house. Rinse this out a little to my water. So, back to school. I had two moms on. They didn't even talk about that to school. <laughs> no, I had two moms earlier for those of you who are just getting in oh, here. Sorry, Christian. I had two um, moms on. What? Gambia Good Life Africa says I love Jamaican and African food. Like lasagna, though. Your, yeah. your phone is on 20%. Um, my charger is there. You're gonna have to plug out the mic though. There's a mic on this? Where? Really? That thing? Wait, uh, this is a mic? Yes, that's a mic. What did you think it was? Um, I thought it was a part of the stand. Wow. So what, they won't hear you? No, they'll hear me. It just won't be, I don't think it'll be as clear. Okay. So that's one done. Uh, where's the foil? I bought some foil that doesn't stick to the food. Oh, here it is. Cover this some foil. foil. That stick to food. Wow. Man, I'm gonna get this right in the oven because I don't want that pasta to soak up all of the stuff without it actually cooking. Who is this Asian guy that Joe will put me on to? Ew. 
Oh, the <laughs> one that he plays. Yeah. Yeah. He, he wants me to um reach out to him about writing. No. Oh. He, he, well, I did mention something. I said, I told him about, I said, because I really love his voice. And the fact that he's Asian is just more refreshing. But um, I told him that if I was to like be an artist, I would want to do like a duo kind of thing. And he would be my partner. Well, well, a duo or feature? A duo. Like Big Sean and um, Janae Igo. They're, they're a duo? Is it like they're a group? Yeah, for like two albums. Oh, I did not They know. got together. They were called 89 something something. I don't know. Some, some weird name. I'm like, what does this have to I don't, like, I couldn't make any connection to like oh yeah these numbers are so but but yeah they did like i think two like two albums together but i always like the idea of a duo especially since they're so rare it's like either a group or a solo artist yeah and i feel like i wouldn't want to be a part of a group but i don't think i would really want to be a solo artist okay. renee yeah, Oh, no, go on with what you're saying. That's why I was saying, like, it would be good if you can get featured on something, like the hook. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So Loba told me that he wants me to write something for Hennessy. Okay. Renee says, Aziza, please save me some lasagna. We love you and your beautiful family. <laughs> Thank you, Renee. How you doing? Okay. So, my feet hurt. Hurt. Yeah, my feet hurt, and I haven't even been sanding that much. I'm gonna warm back up this Impossible Burger. So, on its own, I like the way the Impossible Burger tastes more than the turkey. Turkey has like this buttery kind of taste, but I feel like I can still kind of taste the death. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, but that's a thing. That's a thing with me and like me. So I'm, I mean, because you all have seen in some of my previous videos, I have spoken about the fact that I am raised, I was raised vegetarian, been vegetarian for, yes, at this point, most of my life. But because I'm allergic to fish and I know some of the down, not so great names about eating too much soy as a female, um, my protein options are kind of limited. To me, nuts are very high in fat. And um, what other high protein beans messes with my stomach? So my doctor suggested that I do eat a little chicken, a little poultry. And the first time I did have chicken, I got very sick, but small doses, I got used to it. So I do eat chicken. I still can't, I guess people will eat the, the gristle part, like the tendons and chunk bones. Yeah, I, I'm not, no, I don't think I'll ever get there. So I, I feel like I can taste because I'm not used to the taste. When I said I'm good, thank you. Because I, good to hear. But because I, um, I'm not used to the taste of meat, in the fact that I did not grow up eating it and I only had it once I became an adult, I feel like there's this funkiness that I called that I called death. <laughs> I, I, I can taste the death. So, <laughs> yeah. So, I like the taste of alternative meats much better. Actual meat, but a lot of times alternative meats are made with soy or wheat gluten, which I try to cut down on my meat intake. Now, 
and leave some tomato sauce for Monshow Show. That was really cringy to hear. For her pasta. <laughs> that was also cringy. That was also cringy to hear. So I told the Loba that he has to make a dance to Seven Sun. He claims to be to have already started. I don't believe that. Seven Sense is the song that from the guy from Hennessy. No, mommy. No, Seven Sense is NCT. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He should. That's his kind of music. Dance yeah. to. Open your eyes. Take it slow, take it slow. So if you're just coming on, I am here. I've been here for the last two hours and some cooking lasagna from scratch, scratch. I made sauce from scratch. I made the ricotta cheese from scratch. I didn't make the mozzarella. I had some guests on earlier, so when this posts for replay, make sure you check out the beginning. I made the pasta from scratch, scratch with the pasta dough. I'm adding more water to the sauce because when you make fresh pasta, you don't need, you're not cooking it, but you still need some of the liquid and you need more liquid in the sauce than if you was using cooked pasta because pasta is going to absorb the water from the sauce. All right. So I'm going to taste that for salt. I think that's good. I think that's good. Mm -hmm. I feel a little more onion salt. Just a little, little. I really have to buy more onion salt. Krishna, are you there brooding? You're just sitting there quiet. Okay. So I'm gonna say now, Krishna, huh? Yeah, that's right. Should have done. So like we did. Renee with the says, are you allergic to via wheat gluten? Um, I think I have wheat sensitivity, so I try not to eat so much wheat. I feel like when I am eating bread a oh, lot. Oh, Vita wheat gluten. Oh, Vita wheat gluten. Oh. Am I sensitive? Well, that's what it, usually people who are allergic to wheat or wheat, or who are, people who are allergic to wheat, like if they have like celiac disease, it's because of the gluten. That's why you have so many gluten-free foods. I have a wheat sensitivity. I'm not sure if it's because of the gluten, because there could be other things. He's talking to this lead. Uriel is supposed to be helping. <laughs> and he's laying on the couch, sleep talking. Okay. Uriel. Wow. I can't get the phone camera. Okay, what was I saying? All I know is that she's saying it. So. Vital wheat gluten. I have noticed that when I eat too much bread, my stomach just wells up. So I try to cut down my wheat intake. This is not gluten free. This is the pasta dough. It's not gluten free. Okay, next time. So yes, bottled wheat gluten would be something that if you are allergic to wheat, that you are allergic to. But honestly, ratio wise, this right here, the amount of pasta, this is not even a pound. And we're going to split it between quite a few people. This is mostly, I think, the tomatoes and the I'm cheese. It's okay. The oven will be on soon. Oh, the oven's already the oven on. Is on. The oven will be on for a long time. So. I got an itch in my nose. Well, I don't want to not be retired in the show. Because, you know, I got to go pre-prepare for this meal. Yeah, no, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. 
because there was no way I was not doing that to eat this, <laughs> this homemade food. I mean, there's only two people on now, but there hasn't been any comments since the last show. Okay. I think I made these. Did I make these thinner? Oh. I feel like I have, you know, a comment right oh. here. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I was thinking of calling it Eris, or I was thinking of calling it job but then I felt like there was something I could really connect why to call it job. You know what I'm saying? Like other than it just being my middle name. Mm -hmm. I don't really have a connection. I don't really have any kind of idea as far as what what is what cool name is connected to strapless book bags. Mm. <laughs> Because obviously it, it'll be strappy. Be <laughs> uh, what she said? She said strappy. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> it, it, it's funny. Ra was trying to be funny. Renee says, Do you think you would ever go vegan? If you ever go to Chicago, I would love. Oh, I would love for you to do a review of the pizza egg rolls and a few other famous items from the restaurant. Also, Kale My Name. Also what? Kale My Name. I think that might be a typo. I considered going vegan, but... Go vegan. Yo, I think that if I did vegan, it, should be, vegan. it would be intermittent. Like I thought, like you can do that too. <laughs> intermittent vegan. <laughs> intermittent. <laughs> This is why that'll never work for mother. One, <laughs> this is also a reason why she can never go vegan, right? She, just gotta she loves her leather and she loves her fur, okay? No, vegan. but that's she loves her designer. But if you're vegan, that's, that's it. Yes, those are included. No, only for those who include them. No, no, but only for those who include We go by definition. <laughs> vegan okay, diet. Okay, you want to be a fake say, vegan. Can wow. we say vegan diet then? I am so sorry to all the real vegans out there. <laughs> <laughs> they just, they just taking your shit and making it work for them. <laughs> Who you are. <laughs> um, to answer your question, Renee. Oh, she says, I meant, I can't believe it's not meat. 
and Kale My Name are two famous vegan restaurants in Chicago. Oh, okay. So they're, okay, they're restaurant names. Got yeah. it. Kale My Meat. Kale My Name. Oh, Kale and My Name. And then the meat. other restaurant is I Can't Believe It's Not Me. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I gotta well, try Michelle, You gotta wipe that shit down. I mean, I know you uh, wanna be vegan, but hey. Jeez. It worked the same way, right? Listen, I'm on y'all now. Mommy came to me and said, I might go vegan. And got me excited. That's how they dry. She says, You would love the pizza egg roll from I Can't Believe It's Not Me. I'm gonna, so yes. And where is it again? What's she saying? Chicago? Chicago. Yeah. yeah. If I'm ever in the Windy City, is that right? Um, I'm definitely gonna check those out. Because, you know, because I just want to be on. But that's a thing. Another thing, too. Even oh, with the meat that I do eat, I don't be wanting to just like go anywhere. So honestly, a lot of times I eat out with less on um, Donald chicken and nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> or how about any fries from anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anytime. Nacho fries. Um, anytime I do eat out, <laughs> I'm more excited to go to a vegan or vegetarian restaurant than I am yeah. just yeah. a regular restaurant because I'm not big on eating meat that either myself or my grandmother or family did not cook. Look, oh, I did that yeah. in two pieces. Except, yeah, Buddha Bodai, it's a vegan place in... New York, it's the love of our lives. And before Buddha Bodai was another vegan place in New York called Vegetarian Paradise, which was also mm -hmm. the love of our lives, but it was taken through us, through. Very, taken from us. Taken from very, us. They closed I mean. down. It was all this back and forth with the owners. And yeah, it was taken from us. To to so we also go to Veggie Heaven, but. Um, these are all in so, the city. So, yeah. So, we prefer... Manhattan. We prefer vegan places. Veggie meat is like, like, that's my ride or die. You know what I'm saying? We cool like yeah, this. Yeah. I prefer... I think I prefer every type of veggie meat over the real meat. I don't know. I know yeah, because I made like even that. chicken. Like, I made this... Renee, I made this um bowl yesterday ginger chicken with broccoli and my roasted garlic oh my gosh on some not basmati jasmine rice so good and honestly i always enjoy those things more than the regular chicken yeah even my jerk chicken i can't eat too much of it i'll have like one piece and that's pretty much it yeah but yeah, we're we're vegan restaurant people. Like when it comes to eating out, we'd rather vegan. But I must say that it does lean towards more of um, Asian vegan food rather than. Listen, I honestly I don't mess with American vegan food. <laughs> to, to be real with y'all, I I only cause is that I have seen a consistent type of meat that is used that americans use for their veggie chicken for their veggie whatever the type of vegan meat that they use is just not it's not tasty it's not flavorful it's not good okay where's the mozzarella not i we're both taken out because both are in the freezer oh shoot i was hoping that wasn't the case i thought i put one in the freezer yeah, you put one in the freezer, and then you text me telling me to put mozzarella in the freezer. So I'm like, but there's one in there. So I'm but like, then oh, but I didn't ask y'all to take it out. Not I. How did I don't one think get out? So. Then? Well, then that I don't know. The last time I just saw the mozzarella was yesterday when you told me to put it. I mean, I have some pre-shredded mozzarella. Always have a backup. Um, yeah. Uh, Americans don't have vegan meat down. They just don't. As far as making it, like creating it, yeah. Well, it's even creating it, impossible, impossible meats. Okay, y'all, y'all pretty good with the impossible meat, but I would still choose Asian say, vegan like meat. Not American. <laughs> 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 I would still choose Asian vegan meat over 
an Impossible Burger any day. Yeah, well, I mean, it was Asians that even developed. Yeah, and then, of course, you have all the other, like, Morningstar, Gardein, whatever. Like, all that other stuff I'm really not into. It's not good to me. I'm more for Maywa and, honestly, yeah, back in the day. Yeah. Have you tasted their original burgers? Mm-hmm. They they taste like nothing. Their original burgers now. Yeah. Burgers, yeah, they taste like nothing. I don't know what the hell. I know. I'm like, who it's hurt y'all? Yeah. Um, but yeah, Maywa and like, chi- I've I've decided Chinese food is probably my favorite food because now that I'm realizing all my favorite dishes are actually Chinese. And I'm only finding this out because, of course, when you go to a vegan Asian restaurant, it's a fusion. So you can't really pinpoint, okay, what is this dish exactly from? You know what I think is really funny, though? The fact that my child, my offspring, has been probably the most vocal. And y'all don't see her face. (laughs) (laughs) Um. But, but yeah, uh, yeah, I've realized Chinese food is my favorite, period. So, if it's vegan, I'll definitely be, it'll definitely be going down my throat. (laughs) 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 Um, Renee says, also, you would look out the Spirit Elephant restaurant in Chicago. And then... Girl, you just got a whole list, huh? Are you vegan? (laughs) Then she says, I know it was. But I don't remember like what was actually said for her to respond. I know it was so. Uh, and then Angela Car- oh, Caruther. Oh, okay. Um, Angela Caruther said, "Hey, hey, Angela." And then Renee says, "Wait, because I'm behind on messages." Renee says, "Have you ever made jackfruit barbecue?" Monshow did. Yep, Monshow did. I tasted it. She did a good job. Angela said, hello, everybody. Then she said, hello, Renee. Then she said, hello, Gambia. Then Renee says, I "I promise. I promise the, I don't know what word that's supposed to be. The most of you? I promise most of you would love. I can't believe it's not me. Probably. Even meat eaters love it. They sell out all the time. The both of you would love the spirit elephant. Um, yeah, okay. then the elephant must be Asian then. Oh, okay, yeah. All right. Angela said hello, Aziza, again, I guess. Renee, yes, yeah, spirit elephant. Renee says 80% vegan. And then Angela says, welcome. And everybody, please stand up this live and share this video. Wow, we're into three hours and 17 minutes. So we're going to go go over three and a half hours? Yeah. I'm going to get this in the oven, and then the dessert part is easy. It's quick. And we're just going to do a sample because it's ice cream. Yeah, she wasn't out here making homemade ice cream, though. No. <laughs> I did not make homemade ice cream. I am shh, my legs right now. Yo. Stand up for three hours. And since it's been a while since I've worked in a restaurant setting, not used to this life. Yeah. Nonstop. Eight I'm, hours. Restaurant, eight hours. Nonstop. Just standing. Yeah. Shoot. Shake Shack alone. 12, 14 hours. Yeah. I'm like, y'all got me. <sighs> <laughs> Can I curse? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, me too. That's what's up, though. Oh, well, um, okay, so, okay, Renee says the Spirit Elephant is another vegan restaurant in Chicago. Then she says, hello, Angela. Look it up. Then Gambia Good Life Africa. What time is it there now? It is... Alexa. What time is it? 
time is 8.21 p.m. There you go. It's 8.21. So damn, we late. I'm supposed to be fasting already. So I guess I'm skipping today's fast. Oops. Because after all this work, I've got to taste Oh, food. It, that went out. I meant to say something because it been went out. Again? Why is it going dead so quick? Watch out. What's up with your phone? I don't know. Oh. It's an old iPhone. That there's the answer. <laughs> well, you actually Googled how long will iPhone set last on one charge. An iPhone 8? That's what Munchoha? 14 hours, yeah. Yeah, that's a new iPhone 8, though. Because remember, we also found out that iPhone would drop their yes. whatever when the new... I was like, how does that make sense? I mean, I get it. You're trying to force everybody to, to buy, buy the next phone, one. Yeah. But really, though, like, you got to be that grimy. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, you're going to get enough sales anyway because it's something new. Yeah. I have a Samsung. And when the newest Samsung came out, I wanted it. <laughs> so. Yeah. People are going to have that urge anyway. Exactly. It's called. She said it's 1 a.m. here. Really? Oh, you up late with us? Hey! Okay, I'm... I am so sorry, live, because honestly, I don't remember what I've been saying this whole time, <laughs> and I really just pray that when this video gets posted up, if it ever gets a lot of views, like, I pray to say something stupid. <laughs> Yeah, it's Asian. It's Asian. I just looked it up. Okay. What, okay. I didn't say what, anything stupid. Because I've made some oh. out loud thoughts. You didn't say it. Yes, you have. <laughs> like, oh shit, I forgot we were online. You, you were saying the stuff. I was like, ooh. I mean, it looks <laughs> Asian, I guess. I was like, ooh, okay, she said that live. Do you remember the things or a thing? One of them, yeah, no, it's not Asian, it's fancy. <laughs> I was talking about Latino people. Oh, yeah, but that's just the truth, people. <laughs> it's not Asian. That's just the truth because I'm a victim. Okay, I'm not personally, I'm not personally a victim, but I have bear witness to how a lot of Spanish people view black people and it's really not that good and this is a person who has worked in a black establishment with a spanish establishment right next door now you know people were on good terms kind of but there was definitely you know what I'm saying some back and forth because the spanish people have i think I think one one of the drivers got into an argument with one of them because they said something disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And they was like, why would you say that? You can't say that to a black person. Yeah. And it was like a whole bag of fours. And I'm like... Yeah, that's why you didn't have a yeah. lot of black people with the argument about white um, Latinos using the N-word. Yeah, I've actually heard it at the, at the corner store um, on Sanford. Mm -hmm. The, um, it was an older black man came in, and I guess he was annoying the Spanish guy that was working behind the counter. But it wasn't, like, justified annoyance. Mm -hmm. And he called him, you know, the N-word. He was like, okay, nigga. Oh, he did it. Okay. Yeah, like, uh, you're annoying me. But he said it very, like, as if, that's, you know, he uses it all the time. And I'm like, well, wow. I, so I went to... um. Puerto Rico. I went to, am I in the shop? Yeah. I went to Puerto Rico when Hurricane Maria hit as part of a recovery effort. I went with my school the first time. I went to my school the second time, but more the intention to help for Precious Little Ladies, my nonprofit organization, to bring services there. So we gave out, you know, girl, we got covered bags. I held a survivor support group. Um, we were on the island of Vieques. And while I did not experience racism or discrimination, I definitely stood out. I remember specifically men talking about me and using a term called Le Negra. 
And when I ask someone, I mean, I assume that it has something to do with black because, you know, the word Negro is Latin for black. Um, I asked somebody and they was like, oh, it's a term of endearment. They're saying La Negra was pretty black woman. So that's what they told me <laughs> it was. But I did notice people looked at me like I was so different from them. But this is the thing. Puerto Ricans in Puerto Rico are very <laughs> I'm sorry. I looked like I, I, I felt <laughs> like I didn't feel like I stood out at all because there was plenty of women with my complexion and darker with hair textures that ranged from really tight to really loose and curly. Like I, I didn't understand. Well, how did they see different except for language? Because there were so many that looked like me. So yeah. I, I don't know. I think it's definitely a, a social positioning. And the thing is, is that even us going there as Americans, most of the group that I went with from my school, shout out William Patterson University, were white. There were a couple of Latin, someone from Dominican Republic and someone else who was Puerto Rican on our team to go and help, but everyone else was white. The entire routine was like the professors were white. So all of the people like in the positions, in certain positions, they were white. And they sat us down and had this whole conversation with us about how the social structure there in Puerto Rico was, how they feel, how Puerto Ricans feel as far as their place in America, because they are part of the 50 states but they're definitely not treated like they are part of the 50 states. And especially with Hurricane Maria, all of the drama and the scandal and everything with what was going on with the money and FEMA giving support and rescue efforts, they felt that it had a lot to do with because of discrimination. And they internalized that discrimination so they literally sleep. they literally my professor literally sat us down and was like so make sure you are you know offer to hug them and you know speak with them like you are equals and i'm like this is weird <laughs> like really and then i had to wonder well how much of that is because of her position because she was well she is a white woman so how how much of that that she was sharing with us who essentially was a mostly white group was she really speaking to the white people in the group and not necessarily me or the other hispanic people in the group so it, it was yeah. just it was definitely an interesting experience it was definitely beautiful beautiful people beautiful place even with all the destruction surrounded by all the destruction and i can't wait to go back but those kind of things, it was really interesting like experience. So Renee says, Aziza, I promise you would love the spirit elephant. The cauliflower wings are delicious, among other favorite famous dishes wings. there. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, Monchelle was looking it up. Christmas here, garden. Oh wait, oh, sorry. Okay. Um then Gambia says we are chosen, that's why we are hated by all races. Then she says Spanish and Latino, etc., are not white because of the mix during slavery. Well, then that's the thing. So, where is this discrimination coming from? Because okay, so well, sorry. Um, so this is what it is, right? Spanish people technically are white. Um, Spain is in Europe, but and I do understand that obviously there was mixture in slavery. But that you, that kind of was included everywhere, gonna, which is why you have obviously mixed black people in America. Charger, I'm using my charger. Which is why you have obviously mixed mixed black people in America, mixed black people in um in the Caribbean and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But technically, the core of Spanish people they are white people because Spain originated in in Europe, within Europe, then they what? They moved to the, where did they move to? Well, the, well, I, the that, Caribbean? That's what I was gonna say. Or the I, South America? So a lot of, I 
mean, when we, we did go and see the history of Puerto Rico, of Puerto Rico, we went to the, there's a museum in Vieques that goes through the entire history of it. And the, the primary, the people that are in Puerto Rico now are a combination, a mix of enslaved Black Africans and Taino Indians. Yeah. That's what the majority of them, now as far as the language, you're right, because their slave masters, their colonizers were Spanish. They were from Spain, Yeah, right? they came there and then brought slaves. But when they brought slaves, well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot more to that. But what I'm saying is, so the descendants, the people that what populates it are still primarily those that are from, that have African ancestors. African yeah. ancestors and Taino Indian ancestors. So, yeah, but that's those, but then those people, you, 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 they are like identifiable. You don't go to a clearly visibly white Spanish person and say, well, you're not white because there has been a mix of you in different countries. Well, yeah, I, I feel like there's so many of them because have you seen JLo's grandmother? No. Jill's grandmother is it great grandmother or grandmother. She's black. She's a black woman. Yeah, but and then then the, but then everybody's black. Oh, well, okay, not everybody's black. But in the same case of just if you are seventy five percent white, you're white. Just like if you are seventy five percent black, you're black. See, me and you will be disagreeing on that part. Yeah, we, we spoke about that. We did speak about that. Yeah, yeah which I'm I still not disagree on, on that. Because okay, yeah. Tech, if you want to talk about technicality, okay, yeah, you're mixed. If you have a quarter black in you, you can you can probably claim the mixed card. You probably really can't because honestly, I feel like you are completely denying the majority of, of what you are. And that's kind of the issue that I have with a lot of people because then, yes, then why are, why, if I was a quarter white, why can't I say I'm white then? If you are a Puerto Rican, why can't you say you're yeah. white? Yeah. Why can't I claim being white like a person who is a quarter black can claim being black? I, because race is an illusion and a social construct that was created by those who sought to weaponize it and make themselves superior. But so, if, so if you are functioning in i believe if you are functioning within that construct then you kind of i mean you can do it you can call yourself whatever you want but if you are functioning within a construct that was created mm -hmm. um then the rules or the, the structure that they created is going to apply because if you are walking around here and you are only a quarter black right but then everything else with the census like even now this the u.s census i mean initially all you had to be was what five percent black speaking yeah black? but see that's what doesn't make any sense because then if we're gonna sit here and say that well then th then there should be no issue there should be no back and forth there should be there should be plenty of white people walking around claiming they're black and black people shouldn't be mad for it. Right, but but we live in a society where there is privilege that comes along with being white. Yeah, which is why if you're 75% white, then you're white because you you receive that privilege. Okay, maybe there's a tiny percent chance but if that you you're were, a quarter you black, black and you're brown, right, but that's yeah. what I'm saying. That that's that's too minuscule to even to even really consider and be like Oh well, if you're a quarter black, I mean, if you're brown, then yeah, claim claim that shit because I definitely couldn't wouldn't be able to tell you look black. But definitely people like Palsy, who clearly looks like a white woman, and she's seventy five percent white but a quarter black, she shouldn't really be allowed to say I'm black, especially if she benefits off of her whiteness. 
Yeah, and I mean, even that term allowed to say, it's kind of like, I feel like it then brings you in a space of going back to the whole privilege thing. You know, I just think, but even with Halsey, because I think that's where we had our, our, yeah. our disagreement, because I'm like, but she had the black, or she experienced the black experience, even if it was by proxy through her grandma. She went through stuff with being a mixed person. Essentially, it was because she was a black person in a white neighborhood. So um, the fact that it affected her negatively. But wait, do we know that she went through stuff? Because yeah, of, I told you, I read the article. She had. I read the article too. I know she was called. She was. People were bullying her. She was called a hoe. But from what I know, it wasn't because of her skin tone. But I mean, well, she had. She didn't have a skin tone. I read she's white. another. I read another. Um, she has a hair texture. But I read another I mean, article like where it. she spoke about her grandmother and and seeing discrimination against her because you know, of course, you know, mm. skin, blah blah blah. And I'm like, well, as a loved one, she's going to have that. It's going to affect her. You know. Yeah. And if her parents, if one of her parents is visibly African American, then whatever they're going through is going to affect her too. Um, yeah, I just feel like it's it I just feel like personally it's not enough. She still whether she suffers from any kind of discrimination because of her blackness, she still benefits largely and mostly from being I mean, definitely white. at this point, because she looks more white now. Yeah. You know, I felt like when her younger pictures, she definitely looked like some of the mixed women that you see in the 70s, especially when her hair was, was her hair texture change at some point. When did she yeah. claim it? Claiming to be black, though. Like, when did, they, when did she... She she was just saying certain things that black people didn't like, because... It seemed like she was, well, she was being a clout chaser. She, well, she was accused of um, black facing when she let her natural hair out. Oh, yeah. I don't know about she, all that. And cultural appropriation. She I know she was accused of cultural, cultural, cultural appropriation. Because when she, she let her hair out. Something. Yeah, well, this, she, it was an afro. Her hair was just natural. She grew up whatever process she does. And people were getting on her because she was a white girl putting a wig on. And it was her natural hair. Her natural hair is actually very curly. This curly ish. <laughs> Y'all see what I didn't see it. I'm just saying, I see it and it looks like white curly. I mean, okay. It looks like perm curly. It's like, it's not like. I saw Kim a picture. She had a natural curly like, hair. Like a South Afro like her. Oh, yeah. The picture I saw, it looked fro like. But the I'm curls not. would still look like a white woman got a perm. But, you know, that's that's neither here or there. Because, I mean, obviously, yeah, she has textured hair. But I don't think she deserves... I, I'm not going to consider her a black person because of that. She doesn't... And that's what's also weird. She clearly wasn't raised... I mean, okay. You know what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, either way, whatever, whatever black essence she's learned wasn't that strong because if you see her you see how she acts you see how she talks and you see her mannerisms it's very white womanly or is it or it's very white seeming i can't say i i mean i know i'm black <laughs> i know a lot of black people i know the difference between a mixed woman or a mixed man being raised by a black mother compared to a mixed woman or a mixed man being raised by a black father. There is a difference. And it's very, it's very, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can see it. Well, I do think that I, I cannot speak to the experience of someone who is biracial, that feeling of not knowing if they belong or questioning I do think that there is probably more dialogue in public growing up about their race just because maybe they present like you can't really tell. Yeah. Which then 
has its own stress factors. Because me as a black woman, I am clearly black. But no one got to ask me, what are you? I have been asked what I'm mixed with. I have been asked that. I've been asked that too. I've been asked what I'm mixed with. You know, where are you from? Oh, you don't look all black. I've gotten that. And it's kind of annoying. I mean, y'all Most know. black people don't look all black, though. Well, definitely most black Americans. Well, a lot yeah. of black Americans. Because as descendants of enslaved people, we mix with a lot of stuff. But, um, yeah, it doesn't... But am I going to start claiming white? No. It doesn't bother me, but it can be annoying. It's like these extra questions that are a little annoying. And I do find specifically with men, when they have this excitement in their face because they think that I'm mixed, like black men, it's very annoying because they're like excited at the possibility of me having Indian or white or whatever, whatever in their mind, whatever they decide is exotic and not just regular black. And then when I'm like, I'm black, I don't go into anything. I don't go into, and I'm just like, I'm black. Then you see the disappointment in their face. And I'm just like, that's so annoying. Yeah. So to have, to be biracial and have some ambiguity or have people wonder and then being asked, especially during teenage years, because teenagers are cruel. Um, and then if you're living in a certain area, like I, like all of that has got to just have a bunch of, a bunch of stress. Oh, Brenda's back. Oh. Um. Yeah, for me, listen, if you are a quarter black, I'm Where's sorry. In my book, you're not black. You can call yourself all you want to. That's fine. If you want to consider yourself black, if you got curly hair, you know, that's, that's honestly, that's really great for you. I'm not trying to join. Did you move the thing? Did you move the camera? No. Why does it feel like it's turned? It is turned, but I didn't move it. So. Actually, let me get the other um, yeah, that that's like that's great for you. But me as an actual black person, I'm sorry if you're not either half black. If you're not if you're not half black and if you're not and if you're or if you're not majority black, then I don't especially if you benefit off of whatever white looking features you have. I don't think that this really should be a fight. Like, I don't think this should be an argument. If I, if if I was in that same boat, I would I would get it. I'd be like, listen, I want to claim my blackness, even though I'm seventy five percent white. Black, but cool. I'm not gonna sit here and try to invalidate you as a black person because clearly you had to suffer more than I have. So, um, yeah, I mean. If you want to claim you're black, you're going to do it whether I like it or not. But I, I'm i not putting you on the list to, of, you know, invites to the cookout. So don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm like, we can hang out any other time, but I'm not teaching you fades either. <laughs> so go find another black friend. Wow. wow, my daughter is harsh. My daughter is harsh. I would invite you to the cookout. <laughs> she only invites you to the cookout because she wants you to taste her food. <laughs> no, that's not true. I would invite you because I, I like to get to know what that spirit is like. Because right now, all I'm doing is hypothesizing. I'm testing you. I'm just full of Steven. Okay. What? Listen, I'm just yeah. saying, majority is majority for a reason. I said, you I'm can't be 75% you. white. And not claim whiteness. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. Like, you could be half white I mean, and claim the other side, but you can't be a majority of something and then say you're not what the majority well, is. The craziness, the craziness about all of this is that we live in a world, we live in a society, specifically America, where um, even the shade of color, you claiming light skinness and dark I mean, yeah. skinness, right. and you know that that is having an effect. There and and what's that? I don't know. Have you did you ever watch that video, Brenda? I don't know if you have you ever heard of Old Steph Old Steph Co. 
No, I think but, that's her um, name. She's a YouTuber. She did a video um, titled um, I Don't I Don't Benefit from Pretty Privilege and It's Okay. Something like that. But she has a whole video about her not being pretty and not receiving pretty privilege. And she has friends. She lives in California and she has friends who in her eyes are clearly pretty and they get all the attention and no matter how much she dresses up and feels confident no one looks at her the way she wants to be looked at and you know all of that and she's going through all she still has a video about that and um there's every form of social level to give you some kind of privilege yeah, yeah. <laughs> I totally agree. You made a statement that race is an illusion, and I agree with that 100%. Um, it's, it's, it's an illusion <laughs> concept because the truth is, going back down, like I think you mentioned something about the 5% black. The fact is, if you have the way society looks at it, it doesn't matter if you're 5% or 10%. If you, if you have mud in the water, you're black. Um, yeah. And when it comes down to um, race, ra- like in Jamaica, the colorism is, is something that's prevalent. So in Jamaica, we're going to see everyone in our society that are going to be black, right? So our leaders are black. Um, you know, you know our, our, our doctors, our lawyers, everyone in our society is black, right? So, but then, then comes in that whole other concept of color. So, you know, um, if I were in Jamaica based on my, the color of my skin, I probably would not be in a space of high profile privilege because the colorism situation is prevalent in that society. So no matter where you go, that the, the concept of race, just like um, Ziza said, is elusive. It is whatever people want to make it. Right. And, and, uh, and, and we're still talking for, and I think I want my offspring to understand we're in the Northeast. Like we are, we not experiencing some stuff. Joe's experience. Joe's is in the South. They're still experiencing like damn near being hunted and lynched when it comes down oh, to yeah. that kind of yeah. attitude. So yeah. here, there's still a lot more acceptance and open mindedness just because of the fact we have more. I remember, I mean, even going to North Carolina. When I went to North Carolina, um, Definitely. I didn't run into a whole lot of white people. Actually, there was quite a few at the gym, quite a few of older white people, and they were just kind of staring. And I'm like, oh, but I thought, but the town that I was in was primarily black. It's just a different vibe. It's just a different vibe. I know. You know, for me, I mean, I kind of get what y'all are saying about race being an illusion, but I don't really, I guess I don't really believe that. I just feel like there are um there are just like just so many factors even down to our dna to really say that race is an illusion i mean everything technically is an illusion but um i feel like that the idea of race is just too far integrated into our society it means so much i mean and like you said about the whole being mixed and stuff there are there are so many like minute, you know what I'm saying, circumstances of like, okay, well now you have all black people, you have colorism and you know, how passable to white are you and how passable to black are you and what exactly are you made out of and all this other stuff. But um, I do feel like that the line has been drawn, unfortunately, by the white man and it and for that line to be drawn, even though the, it's graying out, um, I still think that it definitely, like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like, it, I feel like it's still very real. And that's something that we can't really, um, like, ignore, I guess. No, you're right. And I mean, you want to take race and illusion. It's definitely, you know, super high quality VR 3D. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. High resolution, high depth. High, yes. high depth, high resolution. Like, you can see 
see the pores, you can touch, feel. It's definitely one of them. Listen, I just want to ask her. Do you have the your mitochondria? Okay. Okay. The e I know only black women got that shit. The e gene. Okay, but you know, you know what I find is completely amazing that you guys have been on for three hours, forty nine minutes making food, and the primary conversation has been race. I just find that completely not really funny, but it's ironic, you know. For the time that you guys been on, and we're making lasagna, which is not a um, African American dish. However, <laughs> this, I don't <laughs> however, this entire conversation has been geared towards race and culture. And I, you know, I guess you know when it comes to a black communities, we everything is centered around food anyway. But yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't... it's called cooking and conversations. But that really just goes to show you, like, obviously, um, race is like, and, and that's something that a lot of, uh, like, white people and I guess go. people no, that white kind people of no. see themselves you know, I'm just outside watching the way. of the black person. I don't need to cut you, but the way you, you weaponize white people. <laughs> <laughs> How do I weaponize it? All I do is say it. Matter Yo, you've been, the whole white man <laughs> and white people like this, this is not on it purpose. sounds like an aggressive seasoning <laughs> hey, Miranda, I'm thinking, this is from the young lady who says to me you know what I mean? you need to just make videos on youtube about like nothing like just <laughs> shoes and hair and makeup and, wow. and she gets out there like <laughs> <laughs> power to the man <laughs> Power to the people. I'm just saying. I really, I didn't even realize I said it like that. But um, but yeah, white people they really they 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 get really surprised about how often black people talk about race, and it's because it's at the forefront of our lives. Yes, you know true. where we wake up every day and reminded that we're black. Yeah, I mean. And again, it also. I mean, what white people get surprised? Yeah. I know my. Just my, videos that I've seen. More like, like uh, podcasts, like having the conversation about it. You kind of realize, like, I watch th this. Um, I watch this. It's not really a podcast because it was a video, but it was kind of like podcast like. But it, uh, it was pretty much just one black guy brought in a table full of white people from pe white people he's known to, I guess, friends that he has that has white friends. Wait a minute. Were, were they all on the table? Like, he brought them in on the table? <laughs> <I know. laughs> like, okay, I'm so trying to envision this. <laughs> Did they come in possibly? They all sat around the table. Okay, okay. They, okay. Uh, it was like his studio or something. Oh, okay. Um, Is it that football player? No. Uncomfortable conversations with a white with a black man. Have you seen that series? No. It sounds I don't interesting know. though. Okay, there's that a series like called Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man where this football player he deals with issue. Of course, it, I mean, it was closer to the whole George Floyd um tragedy, but he started a series. Uh, he's a football player, so it wasn't that hard for him to start a series on his on a channel. And he was interviewing white celebrities so not bradley cooper not bradley cooper who's matthew mcconaughey and matthew mcconaughey and him had a conversation where matthew mcconaughey was basically asking him what are the appropriate ways to look at and say certain things when it comes to talking to black people and showing respect and <laughs> blah, blah blah i mean it was interesting it's kind of funny because he basically was the 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 football player was basically like, you know, this is, kind of safe, this is a safe space for y'all. Uh, <laughs> you can say whatever you are, you like, no judgment here. Yeah, like, <laughs> this is a safe I, space for y'all. So, you know, if you're afraid of sounding racist when you're trying not to, you could just relax here and ask me the right way to do things. I'm like, though, so, not uh, interesting. You know, he wasn't a football player, but I think... I think he does own a business, but he has a podcast, and he and he he also does videos where he talks amongst black people. But it's also it's it's usually always about race. Like he had a bunch of black people come in, and he is like, 
why why do black people have no generational wealth? And they had like literally a two hour conversation about just a bunch of different it takes stuff. Generations to create generational wealth. And yeah. It, yeah, but mommy, it, 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 it wasn't it wasn't that simple of an answer. It because of the teeth, everything an from with. I make work for everything. I don't we don't keep teeth everything from that. me. That's why we don't have nothing because of the teeth. It. We don't have it because of the teeth. It. Take the sugar. <laughs> take the spice. Take everything and then give it cotton and take that too. <laughs> Great, Brenda. Okay, let me let me read these comments because they've been kind of okay. Um, Gambia said interesting convo. Renee says, Aziza, when you go to Texas, please review Nuno's Vegan Grill. Renee just coming with the, with the vegan restaurant. Yeah. And an ATL <laughs> Life's, Life's Bistro. Then she said, thank you. Um, hold on, because I just lost. We got one lasagna out. Life's the Bistro. Oven. Then, right, she said, thank you. Then Gambia says, that's right. Then she also says, the legacy of Willie Lynch. And then Angela put a bunch of purple and blue hearts. Then she put, um, like, the clinking champagne glasses. So y'all know there's a conspiracy around the Willie Lynch and the letters. Uh, hold on, mommy. Let me just finish Wait, these. Then Renee says, Aziva, please post a pic of your meal. Thank you. And then she says, the NC town you were in is relatively small, and the people are essentially set in their ways. North Carolina. Oh. Okay. Um, Rocky Mount. Um, yeah. Did Did anybody see that? Apparently, the Willie Lynch letter is fake. Wow. No, I didn't. That whole this letter that was discovered saying the plan of pitting black people based on color against each other was not real. Well, the thing is, is that this letter, look up the Willie Lynch letter. This letter is not, it's not like a letter outlining the plan on some kind of national scale, like hear ye all I think I remember the speech. It's, but it's a letter um, given instruction, I believe, to someone specific on yeah. this is how you do it. Yeah. This is how you do I, it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but. Lynch law. Oh. Apparently, somebody is saying, or people are saying that it's fake. Idea is still real. <laughs> Maybe if that letter is fake, the idea is still real. Still real. Yeah, well. Um, I think what's what's most interesting to me, culture. You know, I've I've I'm still watching the 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 change in in society with the white passing people now. The, the white passing people. The white passing individuals now identifying as black, coming out of coming out of the woodwork saying that they're black. I uh, find like this Rachel Dolezal people. No, no. She's, she's white, and she she's actually is black. white, but she's actually saying mixed people that are white passing. Yeah, white are passing. now trying to claim they're black. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I, no, I, I, I see a lot that of that too. now. I think being black is so popular. I think being after right. all of the it's social trending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think trending. That's a better word. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of trending. Like even that. What is that gentleman? I can't remember well, his name. Old. The guy, the guy that that um that represents well, not Black Lives Matter. The guy that people always link. And he look he's definitely a white guy, but he he tries to what's his name? And they just published his address and uh, the media um he went he against published the media. His so, address. Yeah, there was a, who is the guy? Uh, Arish, who is that one popular guy that uh, I don't anytime know anytime there's social unrest, they're always he always stands and advocates for African Americans. He's married to a black woman. Um he's a white guy? He, well, he 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 has always Every time asked his race, he he remains um un undeclared. Like he never okay. he never admits yeah, what undeclared. he is. What's his name? Arish, you know this guy. He's a popular guy too. 
They're always tagging him and everything. Um, what is now? I'm gonna have to jump off to look for this guy. And he's and he fights for black people. Yeah, he lives in Jersey. And recently, in the media, they published his address, and his kids came out saying, "Why'd you guys do that?" Because he bought this multi-million dollar home in Jersey, and um, they were saying, "Well, where are you getting the money from if you're fighting?" And what is this? What is his name? I can see his face. He wears glasses. I don't know. Where's your phone? It's was dying because I put it oh, charged. Well, in Google Jersey. Show your phone is Use my iPad. Use my iPad and Google it. This is um, sad. Yeah, lives in New Jersey. I can see the locks again and the cheek. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I can't remember. I don't want to jump off. If I jump off, I'm going to lose it. But he's popular. Yeah, yeah. I need to just oh. open up my iPad to chat. Just black social activist whose address was published. Okay, so now I'm cooking my show's yeah, pasta, but I'm also going to start the, um, the, the white man? topping. And that's what I'm saying. He doesn't Ooh, say what he is, but, you know, it makes it seem, what did you call that thing? It's, um, what is that? What's that other, um, political correct? When you say somebody is, um, non-binary, but it's not binary. What's the name of, <laughs> can't remember this guy's name. He's popular. <laughs> What's his name? See, so you know who he is too, but I just I don't know who he is. Look, I look, I don't follow a lot of these activists. Okay. Uh, I, I mean I see them in the media, but it's not like I, you know, like like even the woman who started black one of the founders of Black Lives Matter, they was questioning she just bought some multi million dollar house and yeah, she ended up selling them. she get the money from and blah blah blah. And they investigated Black Lives Matter, the nonprofit, and it turns out it's Money is coming to them from a bunch of other nonprofits, and I'm like, yeah, that's apparently that's just the main main non non nonprofit world. So yeah, that's just that's how that. That's works. nothing new. Yeah, yeah. that's how nonprofit that, works. Right. And right. the same way, if you look at a church, a lot of the pastors they're multimillionaires, and they have those jets, and they have the big homes. It comes from donations from people. It is what it is. Yeah. People support. They fall under that miscellaneous uh, line. So I bought these. Peaches from Costco's, and they are. Bad. Oh, it's Michelle. You you've been moving this. Yeah. I have. Um, yeah, you just moved thing. it just now. And they are crap. Okay. So. Um, Do better. Are they mushy? Look at this. This is horrible. I I should, really should take them back. Are they? I don't think COVID allows. You yeah, to they're mushy. Look at you know what? If you want to make COVID may not return, allow the return of food. <laughs> This is terrible. I just bought these two days ago. Yeah, but they looked um, beautiful at the time. And the, because of their size, I did think maybe um, you know, they might not ripen or it might be that creamy taste. So that's what they are. They're that creamy. But I didn't even see like this is this is nasty. So this is why I'm going to cook them because a lot of times when peaches are like that, you can just cook them. And they're a little better. You're really a diff. Never mind. What? <laughs> I just opened it. it up. It's just bothering me that you can't find that guy's name. Yeah, I tried looking it up, but everything is talking about a racist white guy. What's his name? Um. All right, so I'm about to jump out and find find this guy and then check you guys. Let me jump off. Yeah. Um, but to small Renee says no with exclamation points. Maybe she's responding to something. Gambia says you missed my message to Aziza. I don't see any though. Other, the last thing that I see is the legacy of Willie Lynch. The legacy, the leg, that's what Gambia said. Yeah, but then she just put a message saying that I missed my message i missed her message to you oh i didn't see it i don't know um then renee said i shouldn't be surprised then she said muriel is growing then she says i love the relationship you have with your children aziza then she says i do too then she says i believe all of your children will be in media in some way oops well technically they already are <laughs> through yours truly because they be fighting it and being yeah. here right now, being involved. I'm about Look. to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I got back and I was like, hey guys, we're doing the live. I and still I can't like, believe I've been here for oh four hours. No, no, no. 
can we not do it? You're yeah. Can we not do it? Yeah, actually, Wake is behind up because I've been standing here for four hours. And Yuri has oh, yeah. been asleep. Oh, yeah. um, and then she says, Aziva, I would love for you to make mac and cheese with fine apple vegan cheese sauce live. I know you will kill it. Fine apple? Or yeah. <laughs> vegan cheese sauce. So, Renee, are you vegan? Kind of oh, Brenda's to, back. How was it supposed to come back on? I was just texting. Sean King. Oh. Sean King. That's Wait it. Up. Oh, oh yeah! I just saw the message. You guys don't know Sean King? No. Does it ring a bell, my friend? Oh my lord! I forget. What I does forgot, he look like? I forgot who my audience. He's light skinned. He he looks like a white man. Um, okay. And um, he he's but he I think his his char character he tries to pretend. Oh. Like, he tries to put a character together of white Dad, of he white, looks like a white black man and a black man. Yeah, but I think he's white. Oh, damn. No, he literally, like, literally, I feel like I take off one pair of glasses, he's white. He take mm -hmm. off another, I put on another exactly. pair of glasses, he's black. But like, he's mar he's it married depends to a black on woman. What, where he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, like, the angle. Yeah. And the lighting. Okay, Brenda, what was he saying? No, so he's one of those, right? He's an activist. Um, and I guess he has a nonprofit organization, but he's truly he built his career on um, advocating for um, black people. He's married to a black woman um, and has mixed children, of course. But I just feel like, you know, this, this new um, agenda in, in, um, in black activism, it's all about capitalism. I feel yeah. like, you know, yeah. um, even the Black Lives Matter movement, I, I support the Black Lives Matter movement, but unfortunately, those that have created the larger organization are, are really just benefiting from the... Um, yeah from the movement and right. not necessarily I mean, the struggle right yeah. because for them it was a hashtag right yeah they were they they when they were hitting the ground running it yeah. was a freaking virtual ground right Led and by black it people. is the people that turned it into literally hitting the ground running you know right and it was like and it was black people however right. the organization has become um, what you, what's that other political correct word? It has no race or no gender, you know, but it truly is not black. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, they're just all following in the footsteps of the NAACP. You know, it's, it's historically, that's kind of what it been is any organization that is for the furtherment of black people and black communities have been, um, Headed by those that aren't black. Yep. Oh, Brenda. Um, led by, is that a bad thing, though? As I mean, long as, I, I as long as agree the, with you as far as the capital as as far as capitalizing on it and it trending right now. I mean, I, I don't know if you can see the hashtag in my live, but it says YouTube Black. Why? Because YouTube is black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're doing to highlight black voices and black creators. Um, yet my my um, video about Black Lives Matter and yeah. George Floyd protests is not conducive to advertising goals. So that is yeah. So YouTube is full of shit. So so if it's so whether yeah, that's you just good. sit down and lock up trying to monetize. <laughs> So, <laughs> so responding to that point of whether Maybe it's a good thing, be. you know, I, I feel that they 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 hold the the um, it's almost like they hold the progress hostage. It's one thing for you to support an agenda; it's another thing to block the agenda. So when you are coming up, when you're saying Black Lives Matter, but the truth is you're pulling in other arguments, then you're just you're just nullifying and you know muting the actual. Um, yeah. And I think yeah. that's what's the problem. It's one thing that you stand with us and fight with us. It's another mm -hmm. thing for you to just to take over. And that's the problem. You know, the takeover, the takeover spirits, these are very strong spirits. Yeah. Oh, speaking of your, your switching of accents, um, Gambia says she loves how you switch from American accent to Jamaican. She switches from British English to Jamaican accent also. Yes, I wish I could switch to a British English. I think British people are just so so sexy. 
you know, <laughs> you're able to make, make you can cuss you out in in the in the most um, proper way, <laughs> proper way possible. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing sexy about a Jamaican cuss out. You know you didn't cuss that one. Your blood, boom, everything, all of the venom comes out. But everything is guns. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Like no. how they talk, it's like shooting a gun. It's, yes, it's, like, it's literally setting a bullet, bullet. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But even in terms, so, so Ross plot, right? Ross plot. Yeah. yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Is they're saying ass white? <laughs> no. The Ross plot. It's like the bum bum plot. Right. Yeah. Ass white. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but you see how different, how less colorful. Yeah, that's like, it's just it's not a aggr- it's not aggressive enough. You know, I right? Think, that I was think, not. I think all, everything that we do, and I, you know, for a long time when I first came to America, people used to I used to hear a person say the Caribbean accent is so musical, right? And I and I was trying to listen. <laughs> I was trying to listen to the music. I'm like, where are you getting the music from? Because this is not musical. And then I start listening, you know, more depthly. And yes, we tend to go up. Our, we have the infliction. We go up and down and we talk. You know, we like hear grandma talk. I'm going to my bed, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I guess we are quite musical and colorful when it comes to our our um our language. Kuya. Yeah. yeah. I agree with you, Gambia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We can switch through, but yes, we. I, I wish I had the British accent. I think it's just so sexy. Yeah, uh, my favorite is an Australian accent. You always like something straight. No, me stop. Me stop. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm Wait, just holding that one. I always okay. like what? How you gonna Australian like the kangaroo accent? accent? I don't know. I don't like that accent. Australian. Australian? Yeah, it just it's, it's it's a little bit too. Like the they they pull those words. They sound country. Well, it is country, I guess. But yeah, yeah. it's like a country British. Right. Yeah, exactly. I'm not not into that. I like my little sexy accents. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. Like how they say so is sorry. I love yep. how that sounds. There's something wrong. But then you'll have some sorry. British accents sorry. because of the region they're from. That it sounds like something else. It just, it just, I mean, I mean, I, I, I will never get. You can attest to this, let's know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what regions well, are now, are those? But you know, the Southern accent, there's certain parts of that I find are quite colorful. Like, you know, Sprint and Screet, I find that quite colorful. Yeah. But. Yeah, because I, um, I hear there's some parts of the Carolinas where it's like, you can't even understand what they're saying. What do they call it? Gullah? Gully. Yeah. Gully? Yeah, Gully or Gullah. I, I like guess. Irish. Gullah. See, Irish or you know, I'm know. looking. I'm seeing this trend. Adish, I'm seeing this trend with you. For a person what? who's been talking about white man and white power, <laughs> all of a sudden, the accent that you're picking up has a very muted shade. Like, really? listen, what there are white people living Scottish? in Scotland. Huh? What did mommy say? What? 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 It's probably it's, it's the DNA. We got Irish in us. You, but you, but it's funny. The Irish, the Irish um, accent sounds very patois. It does. It does sound. Very, it does. Sound very patois. I was quite surprised that li- I was watching the show and I'm like, "What? Them sound just as bad as we do." Yeah, yeah, they definitely do. But I saw a video where I guess this woman, um, she's Irish, and she made a video about I guess somebody talking to her about her accent because I guess her accent sounded more American like she lost it Mm -hmm. and she was talking about how people just say Irish accents but don't even realize that there's all these other accents like you know within that within the accent right but that's what I was saying because you'll go like people from Wales sound different from yeah. people uh, you know east too even in London people in east and London we sounded different than people from another part of um, um, on London people from yeah. London she was going through it like she was saying it like Kingston yeah what did you say Brenda people in uh, Montego Bay and Ochi sound different from the people in Kingston like, uh, like there's certain words that we, we pronounce differently. Like in like there's one one candy I grew up on 
I call it stagabak. I grew up on it. We call it stagabak. What it is is coconut with um, ginger, and it's kind of reduced down to a very hard caramel, right? Um, and it's really spicy, really delicious I've to me. Made it sugar. Before. Sugar. Well, I don't think you've made sagabak. But anyway, you may have done drop. <laughs> no, you have done drop. <laughs> but. Brenda in, said no. No, you definitely haven't made that. And in, in but in Kingston. Grandma taught me how to make it. Not that. No, maybe drop, but not sagabak. Okay, Brenda, finish your story. <laughs> Yeah, no, because 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 it's not something that it's it's very unique. It's very hard, very hard to eat and very hard to chew. Um, and but but in Kingston they call it busta, and we call it stakaba. Okay. So why is it called stakaba? Does it have something to do with the batch because it's well, hard? Well, in the country, the ginger that we use is so potent that you know you, you were putting uh, my mind my childlike mind i always thought it was so potent when you pop it in your mouth you kind of stagger kind of stagger back a little bit because it's so mm. strong oh. <laughs> that's cute that was my childish mind but i'm not sure that's the reason why okay yeah humans are amazing i'm just like this is just a lot because everywhere has different i mean even watching like korean media and how there's I actually you were going a there. soul accent. I knew you were going there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, hold your thought before you talk about the Korean video, because I really want to know. But Lisa, I saw you eating. What were you eating? What did you say? What did you say, Brenda? She was tasting something. What was she tasting? Because oh. she's like oh, completely I, forgot yeah, this, this whole um, cooking So show. this is Mom Show's low-protein pasta. How does she, how's it taste? It's actually really good. I think they've improved on it a lot. Like I remember when she was little, my, getting this stuff. Oh, this is Nutrisha. Okay, there was another brand we used to get that kind of tasted really pasty. Okay. But this one, it just tastes really close to just pasta. So I'm going to. Um, <laughs> Mommy said, so I've been nibbling on it. Yeah, pretty much. Now I'm hungry. But I'm going to. Go ahead and saute her some mushrooms to mix up with this. I wish the um my my overhead camera went Hon dead again. Honestly, if you got me, it tastes better than. Oh, Gambia pasta. says all Londoners sound the same, but people sound different in different parts of the country, such as Manchester or Yorkshire. Okay. They all just sound sexy, all of them. Call <laughs> my name more than once. That's it. <laughs> they say it's so sweet, like Brenda. I don't know how they say it. it's just so delicate. And Americans be like Brenda. It don't sound that good. It just don't sound that nice. You were going about your Korean media. Go ahead, Korean media. Oh yeah, um yeah. Like even they have they have because Seoul is just the city, but they have an accent for it. Like they call it the Seoul accent, where it is like it's not even just how they speak. And like their dialect, it's also like literally words are completely different, and oh, that's okay. just a city. As and, far as the language, really? Yeah. Wow. So and cool. and it differs city by city, and then even in like j um, Japanese stuff, I watch Japanese anime when they want to make a. Uh, they usually have like city Japanese, and then they have southern Japanese, so. People in Japan. Okay, I was about to ask, what is that? Okay. It's yeah. the crumb for the Sundays. So pe peaches. So people in though? Japan, um, people in Japan that live in the South have a different accent from people that live in like Tokyo. Oh. And then usually when it's like that, like in an anime where they have a character that is from the South. Yeah. Because of course it's dubbed in English, then they actually just give the anime character a southern accent. Oh it's wow! So funny. Wow. Yeah. Well, I think I heard y'all watching one. Yeah. And it was like that, but that's something, and I think that that speaks a lot to like to be surprised about that, knowing that here in America, yeah, we go all over the different places. You know, you go down south and their accent is different, or you go to this other part of town, their accent is different, like to expect it to not be the same in another country it's like well you just think asian is just asian or japanese and chinese the same kind of accent yeah 
yeah. as all Japanese and Chinese. Yeah, and how, how different is the dialect though? Like as different as any dialect is really because it's like because yeah. it's like i know one of the members of shiny is not from Seoul, oh, yeah, and he's and he's from somewhere else in korea but well you're applying all the same principles that you do in america right oh so, so i want to hear somebody with a southern accent it doesn't mean you can't understand them you um, there might be some certain like slang words from that accent that you can't understand, but other than that, it's not like y'all are speaking two different languages. Y'all still speak the same language. Right, because look at even here. You got a Brooklyn accent. Yeah. <laughs> and know? they still have like their own set of words that are considered or coupled with that accent. Yeah. Like he from another country. I'm like, Whoa. Yeah, like like you now hear <laughs> the act you hear people talking about but like busted. I didn't know what busted was. That's a New York thing. But now I understand after being used so many years. Like she looked busted. Um, and now I'm while hearing the southern um contribution of bussing. Everything is bussing now. Like if something <laughs> is bussing. Yeah. yeah. Bussing. Bus that? That, that that's probably um oh, that's probably Loba? Loba coming for her dish. It's been four hours. Oh yeah. Oh, y'all been cooking forever. Is it either a low bar on Kimo? And Ziza is eating the pasta. I'm just I'm just counting every thing that's going away. Joe? Joe. Joe. <laughs> Damn, and I sit there burning stuff again. I need someone to come and continue talking to Brenda. The, con the cooking show. Oh, been you are talking to her yeah. anyway. Yeah, but I've been holding this pee like crazy. Everybody's going to leave. But, um... Hi Brenda. But yeah. How you doing, baby girl? So what? So what? What is your meal consisted of today? She says, "What is your meal consisted of?" Oh, um. Well, I think mommy's mommy's just gonna mix mushrooms in my food with sauce and my diet cheese. Okay. What kind of sauce? Yeah. The tomato sauce. Yeah, the sauce that she made. Okay. So, uh, so you're not, you're, she's just doing it, but this is what you normally would make for yourself, right? Do you like this pasta better? Yeah, actually I do. When I first tried a uh, regular pasta, I didn't understand what the hype was. Really? Yeah. I said, this is, Un I mean, it didn't taste nasty, but it, it was like, it just tasted really weedy, I mm -hmm. guess. Okay, I really got this. So the, the pasta, because you've been basically most of your diet, the staple is rice, right? Yeah. So, but I mean, the, yeah, pretty much like this, the PKU pasta is, yeah, rice, I think rice flour, tapioca starch, and some other stuff that I don't, yeah. I, I have been, I've been doing a lot of um rice, um rice substitutes too. And like the pasta, the, there's a gluten-free one that i try which is which is um barilla and it's really mm -hmm. good so yeah i i don't see I, like i agree with you there's not much of great hype using wheat versus rice yeah yeah i think like the pku pasta it's actually very different than like regular gluten-free pasta really is yeah it, is it's, it look it's a little more tender oh uh, the gluten-free pasta tastes more like regular pasta. Okay. But the PKU pasta, it, I don't even know how to explain the taste. It doesn't actually taste like anything. How do you explain it? It's like you don't, you, there is no wheat in it. So yeah. whatever, I don't know. Do you taste wheat when you eat pasta? Like, do you, does it taste like? But see, you you can more identify what wheat tastes like because you have a diet without it. I so see. me, I have wheat, so everything is going to taste you what don't, you consider normal. Yeah, there's no there's no weedy taste to it. Okay. Yeah. So is it is it is it similar to that of the rice? Yeah, it is. I okay. mean, I I tried like some rice pasta, like the Daya brand, and mm -hmm. it's like has a. Uh, it has at least this residue. Yeah. The tap the uh this pasta doesn't. 
So it's okay. straight. It's like it's clean and very oh. yellow. Do you like it? You like it though? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you're not picking on it like mommy was doing though. You have a lot of self control. <laughs> You've been waiting for six hours. There you go picking at it because I mentioned it. <laughs> That's a lot of self control, baby girl. And then you're gonna have. I mean, it's not that good. Huh? It's, it's not that good. But but, but you find. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> um. Oh, there's mommy. No, where you go? <laughs> Watch your face. She did. You came in the frame and she jumped out. She jumped out the frame. Like, Goodbye. Honey, you put salt in this? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> does it taste like it? Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Wait, it tastes like it, but you asked me if I put she salt in it? She dove out the screen like a synchronized swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was because sometimes I forget that I forgot the taste of this pasta. So Speaking of it. synchronized swimmers, I don't mean to cut you, but I, I heard you. Um... Did anybody watch the synchronizes? Is anybody watching the Olympics? I've seen clips, and I've seen clips of the synchronized I'm sorry. And then niggas is... Excuse me. I think the Olympics are over, yeah. Aziza. I don't know where you've been, but I think they ended. The Olympics are over? Oh, my God. Oh. Wow. Wait, how long do they last? Oh, my God. You know what? We don't watch Guys. the Olympics, Brenda. Huh? I was we watching don't... the synchronized since swimmers, though. We don't watch the Olympics. Olympics. So, why don't you look it up and see if they're still running? Maybe it's the Paralympics that you're watching. Okay, I mean, I'm not saying that they are, but I, I didn't. I really didn't know it was over. I've been seeing because when I'm in the gym, they have stuff on, but it could be replayed. No, I'm thinking it's the Olympics, but it could be replayed. So it's not the Olympics in Tokyo, but there are other, you know, there are other Olympian things happening. Okay, because okay, yeah. I've been seeing um special, differently abled. Yeah, the Paralympics. The Paralympics like, are going are they on right integrating now. Them now because I know there was the Special Olympics. So it yes, so so what you you're know, seeing now is. Olympics, but I did read something about them trying to put them together. Ma'am, ma'am. So you're watching the Paralympics now. Okay. And then okay. there are other Olympic um, challenges that are happening all over. To be honest, I'm not that keen with the Olympics. I've only ever watched traditionally just for the racing. You know, okay. that's me. Because I'm Jamaican. That's all I look for. I just look for the... We just run for speed. Nothing else is important to me. I don't know nothing else but the 100, the 400, the hurdles. That's all I know. Did you know that, like... Gosh, it was a ridiculous amount. I don't want to misquote, and I'd like somebody to Google it real quick. The percentage of female Olympic com competitors are intersex. Lord Jesus, we never knew that. I was what? For, no, I didn't know that. I was hoping for. I was hoping that you would say something yeah. like. Yeah. I, I was hoping that you were going to say something on the lines of a large amount of the winners I'm are female are Jamaicans. That's, that's why when, that's why they introduced. So then, when there was this whole female question Olympia. of transgender women playing women's sports, competing in women's sports. And I thought that the whole idea of testing for how much testosterone production was triggered from that, but no, it's something that they've been doing because of the high amount of intersex women that there are in Olympic sports. Well, that, that's, that's surprising to know as a fact, but I know I have seen a lot of um, competitors that just look very masculine. Wait a minute, I didn't munch Sure, what did she say? Uh, I'm sorry, Brenda, you have to repeat that. Because I'm, I'm, I'm frying, I'm sauteing these mushrooms, so. Should Brenda, I just do all of them, Munchu? Yeah. Uh, could you repeat that? No, I was just saying that um, I didn't know that fact. I just recognized a lot of the competitors looked very masculine. She said she didn't yeah, know a lot of the first, and then the African ones because some of the champions were who had been allowed in previous years. Some of the champions from Africa in running, like the 800 yard dash and 200 yard dash, were omitted from the 800 yard dash. So apparently, this time around, 
their testosterone levels were higher. And it's because all all of all three of them were intersex. Wow. Intersex. I didn't realize that. Yeah, I know. I was like, four and a oh. half hours. Wow. Okay. You learn something new every day. So are people are people like protesting against letting like transgender women compete with compete against women? Yeah, like, there's a debate about it. Yeah. There's definitely a debate about it. Well, we're four and a half hours in, people. Almost That's, done, though. But here's Almost but here's a done. joke with that. About to share some food out. What do you say, Brenda? But, but remember when Mo Mo was uh, he had she had the conversation about why our community is no longer cooking. This is why. <laughs> <laughs> this is why. I was just talking to Brenda about that. Them kids will be hungry. I swear to God. I swear to God, yeah. Brenda. What? Four what? and a half hours in. I haven't had a like, meal today. Let's just go to McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> All I've been thinking about is cooking this and how much I'm going to enjoy it. I just. Uh, so, you know I, I what sucks, eaten. though, is that what? cooking for this long because your nose then gets used to smelling yeah. it. Yeah. So, it's not as good. And you're just like, oh, because you smelt it for just so many hours. Not really. I mean, you still didn't taste the texture of the food, so. So I don't know how much. Yeah, you Brenda, that might be a angle. you thing because it always like literally. I have gone to like pick up food from New York uh -huh. and then get like and then of course have the food in my car, drive home maybe about an hour and a half, and literally I don't want the food anymore. Yeah, I can understand that, but that's be the reason why I wouldn't want anymore because I would have had eaten half of it in the car. Okay, right? That's all. Wow. <laughs> No, yeah, no. Literally, after after I smell it for too long, it literally ruins my appetite. I was so mad. I'm like, I spent two hours driving back, waiting for the food, all to not want to taste it anymore. So I've been putting the food in my trunk. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know she was going through all that. Yeah, it, it's gotten that bad. Yeah, I make my show put the food in the trunk because, li like, literally, it... It was just a specific day. We went to Buddha Bodai, and I was literally feeding for the food that I bought so badly. And we kept it in the back seat. And by the time I got home, I didn't even want to look at the food. Oh, man. It, I'm, I was so angry because, of course, my stomach is still empty. But literally, just from smelling it for that long, I, my body was just completely turned off. I was like, shit. It's okay. Like, well damn. You got well after four and a half hours. I'm sure you want some of that food, right now. But wait, what what are you adding to it? Are you adding um? What, what, say, what, what, what are, are you adding? adding to it? I think mommy says she's gonna make salad. That, that no. um, right? Oh, <laughs> she's not making salad. Never no, mind. no. What is what is the okay. container that that um that Mancho brought out? What is that? Oh, oh. Mancho added oh, that's the cheese. Her vegan cheese. Which cheese is that? Daya, what's the brand? Yes, Unfortunately, Daya. this is not being sponsored by Daya. Do you like do you like Daya cheese? Do you like that? Do you like Daya? Yes, I do very much. Really, this stuff is funky though. Yeah, I tried it and I'm like, ever since. I, <laughs> no, I'm, only when it's cooked, it smells really strong. I've tried, I try, I've tried Daya cheese, but because I know what real cheese tastes like, it's hard. And I tried this other brand too. You trying to go vegan, Brenda? You just sampling? No, I'm sampling because I was just, you know, testing the waters that if I, if the world came to an end, if these were options. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, and I just decided that the Lord is not going to make that happen because. Okay, so the crumb. This is the crumb. Sorry, Bo. Okay. The crumb is ready. I'm going to saute up. These, um, ouch. We about to, I'm about to serve everything because I have to do a presentation of the, of the Sundays and of course I have to dish out the lasagna. Let's see if the Impossible Burger one is ready. I think so. Okay, this is good. Yeah, uh, Mancho, just throw the whole bag because I don't know why you're doing it. No, Brenda, this stuff is not. <laughs> oh, this, 
she you keep you've gone in that bag several times. We talk, you know, I'll know Brenda what just put the whole thing in there. Brenda, like, you know how much this bag is ten dollars. I get it, yeah, it's ten dollars. That's okay. This is this is the debut meal. Okay, I'm going to start clearing up the table. These two, these, um, these are going to be quick. Wait, here we go. I'm a little behind the... I'm going to get the overhead camera, Mac. Did you say you're up? I don't understand. He was supposed to be part of the segment. He did nothing. I know. He was talking in his sleep, though. Oh, he was answering the questions? So he was saying, I'm a black man? Did y'all find out what he was saying actually? Oh, he wasn't actually saying like anything under words. Sense. Yeah, it was like words put together. Like he couldn't mommy really make out. Full on conversation and hustling. That's her. Me. <laughs> no, mommy be like, humana, humana, humana. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She'd be like, humana, humana, humana. Are you serious? <laughs> what are you dreaming about, mother? <laughs> mommy. Mommy, literally, you would have thought mind. this chick was having went to a comedy show in her brain because she she laughs like that's really her thing. Before she says anything, she will be cracking up. Really? Yeah, like literally, how you know her to laugh? Now imagine her laughing exactly like that, but her eyes are closed. Yeah, it's the, so freaky. Oh, the, like, the oh, the the um, the um, the the oppressed giggle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The um, somebody recorded it one time. Like flirty. I think we did, but I think I, it was well, probably a while ago. So that that footage just lost. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. But yeah, it's so funny because it's like you expect something to sound like more dragged out, like you're tired, like a tired laugh. But no, you would have thought she was having a full fledged conversation with one of us and we said something funny. Wow. <laughs> okay. okay, overhead camera is about to be back. <sighs> so we could share out some food. Mm, that was good. <laughs> okay, because I didn't. Okay, I didn't like it. So what's the, what's oh. the dessert? So we can see it. How's the table? If yeah, I can see it in the frame. Hmm? Okay, how's the table? You can probably okay. 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 So can you put it closer? Huh? Can you put it closer, more closer to the frame? I don't know. Let me see. She's setting up the camera, so we have to make sure she gets. The table. Is that, is that oh. No, go no, because now I'm seeing the end of the table. Okay, there. That's fine. What are you moving for? She's moving. She's setting up this camera. That's good. Oh, uh, you, I more. missed one side. It was better the first time. Okay, that's good. That's oh, good. there you go, mommy. <laughs> okay, I might have moved this camera something. Because <laughs> I thought that was what I was talking about. So that's fine. I'm gonna be there on the corner, kind of. What's the yes. dessert? Uh, peach cobbler sundae. Okay, so the so we're going to. I'm about to saute these peaches with some brown sugar, right quick. I like your pants. These are all these nasty. Tea. I mean, let me not say the nasty. <laughs> so, how many do you need for? Like they were like, see, it's like really creamy. Well, she's making Sundays, so it's not really like a, uh, yeah, she doesn't need a lot. Um, yeah, I'm only doing these more two, like, but the other yeah. two were so bad. Like, the peach will be more like a topping, so. Krishna, you will see. Oh, oh yeah, so I've decided that we clearly have a spider infestation and a silverfish infestation. <sighs> Thanks for telling the world. You have to like she be trying to hide something. Why am I unashamed? I'm not ashamed about things. Oh crap! This thing is. Is this thing not working? Well, the struggle is a struggle. That is against my will. But see, oh, this is the yes. I'm just saying she does full-on video stories about being homeless, living with a rat. Sleeping with rats, <laughs> Vermont, or sleeping with mice, or whatever, something like that. 
I like those clocks. <laughs> Mark said that was then. This is now. Aziz, I like those pots, the stainless steel pots. These ones, right? I got yeah. this from um um it's Berghoff Essentials. I got it from Quote Look, which is now known as Nordstrom Rack. But I got a great deal because I think this set is that and it came with a smaller pot and like a stock pot and um, there's something else. Oh, the pot that the sauce was in. Uh -huh. And how much worth was it? The regular price was three fifty for the set. I got it for sixty nine. I wish I could get the whole look is no longer. It's, I it's been, it's been mm -hmm. called out. By I think it's now called Nordstrom Rack. Oh, so they, so they bought them out. Well, Nordstrom Rack is the brick and mortar. Nordstrom owns Hope Look, which oh. is like a discounted designer place that I shop at a lot. So now they've gotten rid of, of Hope Look and have just made it Nordstrom Rack. Which means the prices have gone up. Yeah, which which means the prices are more affordable. You get you can get some nice designs, but what I love about them is that they um it's not last season like for the clothes it's not like it's last season it's current now like i got a free people jacket that was selling at the time on free people for 300 dollars. i got it for 39.95 and it mm. wasn't defects or anything so i don't know what their relationship with the designers are but you know can you give me the brown sugar please ma'am yeah i can i can tell that those peaches are tender what did you say? I can tell that the peaches are tender. Where? My show was talking, but I couldn't hear you. Oh, up there. I put it in the zip like that. No, I said I can tell that the peaches are tender. Yeah, they, yeah, but it's that dry, creamy tender. Okay. Yeah, that's that's that difficult. Dry, it's not like I wouldn't even normally if I'm slicing peaches. Like, see, there's so much brown here. Yeah. It's, I don't know if it was bruised underneath. The brown sugar, you don't see it? it I literally just put it. Is that brown sugar? Look at it, boo. Okay, that's fine. I just need some. I'm gonna have to put a little water in this. Oh, you put it really high up. That's the thing. Okay, but this is fine. So I, I'm completely full. Guess what I had for dinner? What? What you have for dinner? You said? Yeah. Arish, what? where are you? Arish, I'm, it's gone. Oh, well, she would but be entertained. She went, she, she went out the back door. Oh Lord. Well, she would be entertained to know what I had for dinner. What did you I, have for dinner? I had kalalu and ganja soup. You had kalalu and what? Ganja and ganja soup. soup. Brenda. I know it tickled me too. I know, I know that she definitely would be tickled. Tickled me. So Macho, I got you um what did I get you? Coconut oat cream milk? or oat milk cream? Yeah. Oh my god, the oat milk. It. I love oat milk. Is it the, is it my brand? Oh that milk is delicious. I don't That's know. Sweet. Is it is it brand your brand is what? The um I can't remember. It's not the Chobani. No, it, the other one. Is it silk? No, it's the tree one. What's it called? I don't even know if this is uh, no, that's not I'll tell you. Off. I'm going to go to my fridge and look because I have some more, which makes me want to drink some now. It's so delicious. So I ran a high risk with rice noodles one time, right? So the bad rice noodles, right, that I had. I boiled them. You what? I boiled them. You had bad rice noodles? One time, one time, one time. Okay. okay. Boiled, boiled them, right? And it, it it wasn't bad anymore. What does that mean? So you kill the bacteria that has yeah, grown on it? <laughs> pretty much. That's exactly what it meant. I killed the bacteria that has grown on it. Okay, so I'm going to put a little cinnamon in this. And my human body is perfectly safe. I wish I had some rum. Oh, some rum would be good. Do I have rum? Bailey's. No, no, no. The one, the brand that I like is Planet Oat. What? The, the oat, Planet 
out. Okay. Yeah, that's the one that's really good. Yo, I went. Apparently, everybody's on oat milk because I went to get some today and um, couldn't freaking find any. Yeah. I mean, I, I ended up finding a box, but. So I, I thought I would be a little trendy, you know, to get it through um, Amazon, seeing, seeing it would be a non-perishable item, right? Uh -huh. So I ordered from Amazon and I paid my $19 because it was supposed to be six of the half half gallon, that's the pint. So I've ordered it. It took an extra week to get here. When it got here, them jokers sent me one 16 ounce box. I was so mad. And you know, because, because it's a food item and because of COVID, Wait, there's no return. How much was it? Nineteen ninety nine. It was supposed to be six, and they sent me one. Um, I ha you know, like a smaller, like it was just a rip off. I, so I called, and I really wanted it because it would be a cheaper option than going to shop. Right, right, exactly. But, um, unfortunately, yeah. it was just the scammers that were out there trying to get me. But you know, you'll see that a lot on Amazon. Yeah. Um, I've seen. What was I buying? I was looking for. And it was something kind of minor. Uh huh. These people were charging like forty dollars. Look, food item. Yep. Forty dollars. I'm just like, what? How? Like, yeah. You have to be conscious now when you're spending on Amazon to, to compare yeah. it to what it would be in the store yeah. because I know the convenience. You know, I would pay for the convenience, but some of the stuff is is just completely exaggerated. All right, so I'm just cooking. Good. Cook, huh? That looks good. It, it, yeah, it does. And it tastes, it really, like, surprisingly, it's something how then cooking. So anytime I get those, like, mushy um, peaches like this, I just cook them. I either make them into, I go ahead and make a pie if it's enough, or I make it some kind of topping for ice cream or to go on top of more food or something. So what's the what did you make the crumb of? The crumb was flour, brown okay. sugar, and margarine. Okay, so real cinnamon. crumb. Yeah, okay. same same for apple crumb. Yeah, common crumb. Same yeah. for same for British and Jamaican apple crumb because yeah. American apple crumb maybe put in oats and nuts. And yeah, and shortening. It's which apple, is weird. apple crumb granola. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't understand that. We all know. So, the best. <laughs> no, right. I like the traditional white flour crumb. Yes, me too. Which is basically shortbread. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> exactly what it is. Which is why I'm a, this is why Aunt Pat, she just takes the leftover crumb and, and packs it in and makes it shortbread, right? Yeah. yeah. I'll put it down. So, okay. So, I'm going to bring this food and share it out. Don't do me a lot, please. After you was up here talking about some, you didn't eat anything all day and all this other stuff. Now you're telling me you don't want a lot. Yeah, for some reason I'm full, too. This is what happens when you cook, especially for a long time. It's a shame. All this is going in the garbage. Shame. Costco's. Not happy. Not happy. I want my money back. Why are you, what is this? What do you have? That was on the couch. That was on the couch. I don't know. Confused. Okay, oh no, I should bring it over here, right? So we can see it. Oh, but I'm about to have some salad. Okay. This is the vegan one. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> the vegetarian one, the impossible burger. Yes. 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 Here is the turkey one. How am I gonna tell the difference? One is more one the turkey one has more sauce on the top. Yeah, or I can put I have some impossible burger, a little bit of impossible burger left. I'll sprinkle some on the Oh, I'll sprinkle some on this one. Eating salad. But now there. So you know that's the impossible burger one. Yeah, so what are you doing with the rest of that, by the way? With the rest of what? Why, yeah. you want to have some? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though we're about to cut into this right now. Here, can I just like sprinkle I'm going to garnish it. <laughs> I'm going to garnish it. Okay. My count 
counted, my back counters look a lot different from when I first started. Mm. That is so good. That's and dish. Salty what? It's salty, Mancho? Maybe it's because I haven't had pasta in a while. I'm always with pasta. They're pink. Oh wow, that looks great on camera. What? The um the food. Do we have any watches? We got two. What? I'm reading the comments. Oh. I'm going to take my horse to the hotel. <laughs> 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 That's the impossible. Okay, so yeah, I can see. Mm. Yo, I have never had lasagna, I don't think anything for that matter, with fresh made ricotta before. It really makes such a difference. Well, that's good. That's good to know. Yeah. The effort is worth it. Because I do like ricotta, but it's not like a, it's usually, to me, it's like, it's not like a, the for, for run, forefront for right, dishes. Right. It's just a compliment. So I've never, I don't know if I've had fresh ricotta. Okay. And then this is a turkey one. Hmm. It's something how the two, you would think this was different sauce and different cheese. Because of the flavor of the turkey compared to the flavor of the Impossible Burger. I don't know if it's that different with, with like ground beef. Mm -hmm. Is there? Um, I don't like that the Impossible Burger doesn't taste very good. 
Yes, but there is a difference between um, the ground beef uh, and ground Compared turkey. Compared to ground turkey? Yeah, ground beef is much more flavorful. It has, it's just, it's just oilier. It has more fat. Okay. So, honestly, I like the Impossible Burger lasagna the best. They're both delicious. If I do see some myself. <laughs> Congratulations, they look good. Wait, let me ask you a question because when you had the impossible one, you took took note of the ricotta. Just is that because it was the first bite, or do you, is the ricotta still a star in the in the um turkey? The ricotta has absorbed a lot of the turkey flavor. Okay. Then I expect it. So that it's it's still it's still different from store bought ricotta, but it definitely it doesn't have as much of its own separate distinct because it's absorbed so much flavor of the turkey, okay. and maybe that's what it is. I think the meat kind of soaks everything up. Where with the Impossible Burger, that meaty flavor is still like stuck to the Impossible Burger. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand, and and that's the reason why I don't like the Impossible Burger that much because the, okay, the, fla the flavor, the flavor, blend. Yeah, it, it stands out. It's very, it's very potent. Oh, okay, I got you. Because yeah. even in, even yeah, in the patty, it's, it's the flavor. Go ahead. Even in the patty, you remember the Jamaican patties? Yes. Uh, yeah, I didn't like. I, it just didn't taste good to me. Now, um. Yeah, that's something because, and I still taste, remember I was talking about before, now I've never had red meat before. Right. But that funkiness this that I say, I don't know if you was on, but I yeah. kind of feel like meat has a taste of death. Like there's this background taste of death to me anyway. Well, that's um, the thing. The Impossible Burger has that. It has this. So well, that's one reason why I don't like um, going to eating ground Anything that's ground, like in lasagna or anything like that, when I go to an Italian restaurant, I won't get a ground because, oh. because um, I feel like it's so meaty. Like I'm okay. not, in, I, don't, I don't like anything that, well, traditionally um, in our culture, when we have red meat, we cook it until it's well done. But mm -hmm. that's not normally how it's served in a lot of um, other restaurants outside of our country. So, like, when you go for steak, there will be that meaty raw, and I don't like that. Right. That's like that. right. Europeans, they prepare their red meat. But even look at steak tartare, right? Yeah. It's um, just... Now, I guess because salmonella is not a, a, a bacteria that takes, it doesn't love red meat, so that's why it's easier for them to eat it raw. Mm -hmm. Um, Where with chicken and poultry, it's all over it. Yeah. So, but yeah, oh, sorry, cool. Yeah, because they have even a way that they cook turkey. They cook, uh, not turkey, I'm sorry. They cook steak called black and blue, mm. where they char and burn the outside really fast, and the inside is still kind of cold. Yeah, no. That's, yeah, that's, that's not the way I like my You mean the inside is kind of raw? And, and no, that's. I mean, you like what you like. You like what you like. And that's. Cup of tea. And that's the reason why, I, again, the flavor of the um, the Impossible Burger is definitely a very meaty flavor. It's a very yeah. in-your-face flavor. It's not something you can cover. So would you say that the Impossible Burger tastes like... I'm going to break this up. Um, the Impossible Burger tastes like beef or tastes closer to beef than, you know. Um, in my opinion, I think it has texture of ground beef but the flavor is so odd it's a very odd flavor it okay so it's not okay the, but the texture is is you know it's like like when you look at the um impossible burger from burger king compared to the whopper right mm -hmm. the, the, they look a lot alike and the, the, right. whopper, the, the reason why the whopper can get away with it is because traditionally hamburgers have that m meaty raw flavor Right, okay. but with with but with Burger King is Burger King has its smoked smoked flavor, which covers up the Impossible Burger, you know, deadness. But having okay. it just just like in a patty, like it did not fit because that meaty flavor was so pungent, and then it was a smoky kind of meaty flavor. So it's not the same, not the same. Okay. The closest I've I've gotten to that though. 
um, prior when I was a um, vegetarian for a couple of years, mm-hmm. I used to get the, um, is that, what is that brand? The sun, some, the morning star, I think, right? Right. Morning star has a ground meat and that ground meat that they use that, that, that imitation meat that they use, right? that's more, that's closer to the, 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 the taste of, of beef. And that's what we were talking about earlier about Morning Star. But so check the comments to see if anybody's asking questions or anything. Um, that's what we were saying. The con? No. Yeah, you can. The Morning Star. Have you tasted it recently? Not oh, recently. I thought it was changed, right? right? Really? Sorry, the different. flavor of it is not great. It's changed, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that they're they're trying to um, change with their competitors, but they actually had a good, certain things were really good for them, but they've changed it a lot. Yeah, I don't know if some other organization bought them out or what. Yeah, because they used to have really good those chicken nuggets were good too. Yeah, I call they my college days. My college days, I lived off of Morningstar because that's when I decided to go um, vegetarian. It was from age thirteen on up. Okay. And um, I, that was it. I lived off of a lot of beans and rice. That'll definitely keep you full. And it's, that's it's it. Cheap. It's, and it's, it's affordable. That's affordable. And that's what well, that was it. And then I went into the pescatarian thing for a bit. So. Okay. So I got the ice cream. I put some of the crumb on the bottom. No one's here to taste this. I can't eat this bowl by myself, especially when I'm not officially eating dinner. You gotta take pictures. Sure. I guess they're gonna be screen screenshots. <laughs> well, well, I guess I mean your live is done now. Your dinner is done, so I guess you can take the pictures after you jump off the live. Yeah, I can take pictures after. from beginning to end five hours five hours five hours mm-hmm. damn i wonder if anybody's gonna watch this. two minutes and five seconds counting one seconds counting i wonder how much this is the longest vlog ever mm. oh man yeah see so yo Sometimes you just add a little heat to something. <laughs> it transforms it. Yes. And it so the peach is good. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. And you saw how, I mean, you said you can see it. They're soft. It was like a sponge, Brenda. Yeah, I can tell. And I hate that because there's a powdery feeling to it when you mm-hmm. bite into it. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, this is good. I just going to like this, I think. Unless you can be so picky. But yeah, like, so when it's spongy, you don't get, you know how peaches have like this tartness? Mm-hmm. When it's spongy, I feel like it loses all sweet flavor. Yep. Well, cooking it brings it all back. It's all like push. Time. It's like just pushy, pushy, like peach. Yes. But I think I'm, I'm with me, I love lasagna because when lasagna sits for a while, even a day later, it tastes much better. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Those flavors that to blend, I put a lot of garlic in it. Mm. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, Mancho, how was your pasta? It's good. You know how quiet she is, right? Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> we made it five hours. Marathon. This is the reason five. why we don't cook at home. <laughs> <laughs> but but as far as the thing, like Brenda was saying, lasagna does taste great as leftovers. I have two here. Mo's coming to get some. And um, definitely a good two-day meal. So you make it once, you go through all that stuff, then you got dinner for a couple of days. Depending on the size of your family, of course. <laughs> so. Congratulations, Zee. Good job. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you. And on that note, (laughs) thank you all. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Mo.
and Renee, and I, I wish I could, Nicole and Angela, I'm, some names are coming back to me. If I did not shout you out, then- Gambia. Forgive me, Gambia, yes. Thank you all for joining in, tuning in, sticking around, coming back, asking questions, keeping the conversation going. When I do this next time, it will be a lot shorter. This was, I was really ambitious with this because I made the pasta from scratch. I made the ricotta cheese from scratch, the sauce from scratch. Next time, you know, it's going to be definitely easier. I might do a sandwich and we'll be done in like 20 minutes. So, but yeah, um, my show's tasting some of the, some of the peaches. She has her ice cream to go with it. How's it taste? Eh? That's good. So, anyway. All right, friends of my love. All right, good night. Good Bye. job. All right, good night. All right, Everyone, bye. be blessed. There you are, blessing. Bye. Can you stop it, please? Oh, I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, <laughs> I, I, there, okay, this is gonna take There's a while. An end? It should be an end or stop stream. Okay, never mind. I'll come stop it. <laughs> end. It's there. That's why I couldn't stop it.